So we are so thrilled to have everybody joining us this evening for our Dancing in Faith. I believe it's a beautiful lineup of artists and mostly just people who are strong in their faith that have an inspiration to share and an understanding that during these tumultuous times that there's something stable that we get to cling to and we are not necessarily um, susceptible to the, you know, the tossing and um, just the waves of the sea, but we really can continue to anchor and be strong together and to be a support for one another. So that's our prayer in joining tonight together with one another. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do is make sure that when you're jumping on that, um, that you're staying muted so our speakers can have a clear opportunity so we won't miss anything that they're sharing. And um, we're gonna start off with Cheryl Cutlip. So Cheryl, we're gonna turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. Um, and thank you once again for bringing us together um, in the Zoom world. And it's great to be connected it's very life-giving. I'm so thankful to be a part of it, and thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this whole shelter in place and stay home um, directive that we've been living under. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that, that we all have many, uh, have had many experiences up to this point about how that has affected, of course, our daily lives, our businesses, um, our family life, our home life, our schedules. Um, we're thinking about, you know, what we can do for the short term and realizing, yes, we can do it. And now as we look out further, we're realizing that the road for many of us um, uh, will continue on for a while. And I think for me personally, this week, I've had a couple of breakdown moments and I'm so thankful that uh, my husband was there. He's like this solid rock to say, you know, Cheryl, um, you know, it's, it's, it settled down, you know, um, and as I work through my, my sort of freakouts, uh, my control freak freakouts, I realized that these are places where um, I didn't first recognize it, but just places in my own life where um, I personally was just not um, remembering to be dependent on God and to, uh, you know, for moment by moment. And, um, and so I just started digging through and I was sharing with Cynthia that, you know, what's on my heart tonight is just to share a little bit about um, what is the difference between, you know, sh you know, sheltering in place and staying home versus, you know, really sheltering in, in God and sheltering in God's presence. Um, and there's such a correlation because someone tells you to stay at home. If you're like me and you know, it's like, no, I, I, I don't stay at home. Like, you know, I don't really see my home very often. Um, and so it's like this tug of war. Um, but if I think about how, you know, really staying at home is so beautiful when you think about God's directive to stay at home in him, to stay in his presence, that that's such a safe place, you know, to, to shelter in place, to shelter in the place of, of, um, of what's really true. And this season has really allowed me to draw back to um, really history, which, you know, draws me back to scripture. And um, a friend of mine who might be on tonight, my friend Renee posted, and you may have, have heard it, um, David Jeremiah did a wonderful sermon about sheltering in place. And he, at the end of the message, which is about a half an hour long, he starts to rattle off in scripture, those that had been sheltered. And it was a, it was fascinating, you know, it's like Moses was sheltered for 40 years and then he, you know, and then you realize what these amazing, um, iconic, historical, real biblical figures did when God sheltered them and, and what they came out and accomplished for his purposes. Um, and I know that like for me too, thinking about as a dancer and as a mover and what my life really looks like as a dancer to really be out there doing and doing, um, that I, I have a tendency to really think about the work of my hands and what, and what I'm able to produce and what I'm able to accomplish. And um, it's really interesting as I was kind of going through all these shelter scriptures, um, I was led down a path as we are when we're reading scripture to Hosea. And um, in Hosea chapter 14, 
it talks about coming out of something, right? And, and we're not, we're going to be different, right? Um, and it talked about coming out. And this is just personally what I feel God is speaking to me. I'm, I'm going to come out. I'm no longer, gonna, no longer going to say, you know, our gods, you know, what we can do with our hands. But we're going to really recognize that, you know, he's, he's the, he's the, he does the workmanship. We get to be present. We get to be a part of it, but we, we, you know, I want to come out of this personally and no longer say, these are the things that I've done. These are the works that I've created. These are the, these are the, whatever. I want to really be able to not say anything, but just recognize that the handiwork of God like in my own life and, and in, in the, the, the lives of those around me. Um, but if for fun, if you want, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, but in the chat box, if you want to just list out some places that you can think of, you, it doesn't have to be like, right, the exact scripture, but things that where God has said, you know, that you're, what you can do in his presence, in his shelter. Um, and I'll just read a couple of scriptures. Psalm 91, one says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the almighty. Psalm 61, 61, four, I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. And then Psalm 27, five, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of the sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Um, there's so many multiple scriptures. If you just do a word study on shelter. Oh yeah. Renewed strength. Yeah. That's yep. Um, there's in his presence in that dwelling there, there, there are things to do within that, that are so life giving and so rejuvenating and so renewing. You can sing in his presence. He sings over you in his presence. You can find joy in his presence. You can find refuge in his presence. You can find shelter until the disaster passes within his presence. Um, so there's, it's not just like you're running away and running under him to hide. Yes, we, we are in a sense, but within that provision of the shelter of his beautiful wings, right, that, that outstretch over all of us, there's truly, um, there's life there. And there's a life that is in a place where um, as we dwell in that place, right, we get closer to the heartbeat of God who's in that place. Um, and um, there's, it's, it's truly a place of, of eternal safety. And in that, in that we come out. And so even though we're in a time of shelter in place, a time of being at home, a time of stepping into things that are going to be uh, a little bit different, um, uh, we can always have access to this divine shelter, this divine safety. We've had that. For, we've already had that. And for those of us that, that have rested in that place of God's heartbeat, it's available to us, you know, despite our circumstances. Um, and so I just want to encourage you um, that, that when you hear the word shelter in place, you're going to, we're going to continue to hear that over and over and over. I think somebody pushed play and just keeps playing it and everywhere we see. And I want us to think about sheltering in his presence, sheltering in him. I am sheltered. It's great. You're not shelved. You're not like put on a shelf, right? We're not shelved, right? God doesn't shelf any of his kids, right? But we're being sheltered. And that is beautiful. And for some of us, this might just be like a practice for, um, for actually going to God. Because maybe you're like me and you really fight with God and you really don't want to get deep into that, into that place with him and really let it, you know, because sometimes that place is uh, very vulnerable. Um, and you just kind of want to figure it out on your own, right? Um, but staying at home has allowed me to just to remember that this can be a beautiful time of sheltering in him. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to encourage you um, that there, it's not easy every day. Um, uh, we can look to those that God had sheltered and really gain strength. We can see what's already happened as history repeats itself. And um, I'm going to finish up here and pass it to Tom, but just, just really quickly, this is, um, we are among a list of amazing saints. Noah was sheltered for a year and built the ark, right? Um, 
Jacob was sheltered for 20 years. Joseph was sheltered for 17, between the ages 17 and 30. Moses, 40 years. David, 15 years. Um, Jonah was sheltered in the mouth of a whale for a little while. Um, you know, so the, but the list goes on and on of people who were sheltered, not just for one month or two months or one year, but up to 40 years. And, and it seems, I used to read that and think that is just, that is just depressing, right? Because, um, because it felt like people were taken away from themselves, taken away from their own lives, their own dreams, their own visions, their own destiny. But the reality is, is God was saving them for something amazing and saving them from themselves. So let's just be encouraged that we're sheltered for a divine purpose and um, it's, it's going to be good. And we're, we, are, we are in this together in the sense that, um, in the very real sense that, that we're all created by God's uh, amazing handiwork and we're all created to be able to withstand the things that are coming our way because we can see what he has for us in the future. And I'm going to say goodbye and pass it on. I was supposed to say something about myself, but just in short, um, uh, yes, I'm, I'm Cheryl Cutlip. I direct Project Dance Foundation, um, danced with the Rockettes for 15 years and did some musical theater and just love to dance, love Jesus. And um, so that's a little bit about me. Thank you for letting me share with you tonight um, and blessings on you. Um, and I'm going to pass it along. All right, thanks. Thank you so much, Cheryl. We really appreciate those very needed and encouraging words. We've got Thera, we're ready for you. Okay. Thank Good you. evening, everyone. I am just so excited to have heard what Cheryl said, and um, it's all working together and I'm realizing that my voice in this process is a little different. God is working on me in this process. It is a process of refining. So I wanna leave this scripture with you. Proverbs 25, four. Take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Something great, something beautiful, something that has the stuff that's not needed removed. But God's way of doing that is often very, very interesting. So I'd like to call what I'm going to share with you the cause for isolation, global reset. It wasn't just a singular thing where there was a Moses that needed to be in the wilderness because he was a little upset with what was happening and saw things happening to his people he didn't like. And he just, you know, he was about to be killed himself. So he had to go into a, a form of isolation in the wilderness. Or Jesus, who got baptized and he was full of the Holy Ghost and he went into the wilderness to be challenged. Or Noah, who gets these strange instructions to build an ark and then he is, he's prepared for something that he doesn't even know what it is, but he obeys anyway. And so the point of this, this being in this space where you don't know is to let God do the, the refining, get the stuff, get stuff off, get stuff in. Take what he's made you to be so that you can be conformed and more solid to the image that he would have you to be. Sure, we have our own idea of who we are, but God knows. His ways aren't our ways and his thoughts aren't our thoughts, but his ways are good towards us. I am so intrigued with what's happening with creative expression during this time of global reset. The arts were for performance. Our careers and paths of our journey were for how we could be better and be more effective and gain more, more uh, leverage and more visibility. And then everything that we knew came to a halt. But I just want to encourage you that the arts, the creative expressions of dance and music and spoken word and, and art and all of that is just being transformed by the living God. It's being used in a different way. We see examples of the arts being used in scripture 
as an extension of something that's happening in the inside, of an extension of a relationship with God. He said, we were created for his glory. And so we, you know, did other things. But it's through giving it back to God, I think, that we'll really understand our true purpose and reconnect to our true purpose. So it's like God gets, gives us this opportunity in this global reset to see ourselves, to see those closest to us, to see those in our circles, to see, just to see ourselves in a different way way. And if we see ourselves, then we can be more effective with what we have to speak through motion, what we have to speak through writing, what we have to speak through singing, what we have to speak through the visual images that we create. It's a time, it's a season to be reset. So I just want to encourage you today that everywhere in scripture that God spoke to his people, he said, I've got you. I'm covering. I'm with you. I'm with you as you pass through the desert. I'm with you in the waters. I'm with you in the storm. I'm with you even in the fire. The three Hebrew, the three Hebrew boys were in fire. That was as tough as they could stand it. But then there was the fourth person in the furnace with them. Um, so I just want to encourage you that he said um, in Isaiah ooh, 43 to, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou work, walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame uh, kindle upon thee. In Isaiah 43, everyone that is called by my name, for I have created them for my glory. I have formed them, yea, I have made him. And so he does all of that because he loves us, because he cares for us, because he already knows the plans that he has for us, and he wants us to be his witnesses, no matter where we're placed. So I just want to encourage you. Yes, there'll be days when you just want to scream and pull out your hair. Yes, there will be days when the peace of God will just override and flood you. Flood you. And then there'll be days when, when inspiration will just come. Come quickly. Don't take it lightly. Take it in. Keep a journal. Keep a recording. Keep a video, video recording. Because this is a reset for what we're about to do. So I just wanna leave these things with you. Keep watchful, be sober, be vigilant. Pray, pray without ceasing. Get the support of your friends and family and your extended family and get your purpose that God has given you in clear vision. If it got cloudy along the way of the busyness of the lives that we had before, this is a great opportunity to refine purpose, to refine vision. And um, I just want to encourage you. This is a beautiful time to recalibrate, to reconnect so that you can be relaunched to the world. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. Whew. Thank you, ma'am. Well, it's a good word. I love the, what we've been created for his glory. It's so true. And we've got to walk in that. Thank you, Dara. It's beautiful. Shana, we are ready for you to share. Yes, um, my name is Shana Acosta. I currently reside in Redding, California, uh, Northern California. Um, my husband and I are both dancers. Um, he was a b-boy from LA <laughs> and I was uh, a dancer from the Midwest, from the Houston, Dallas, Tulsa area. And um, we met dancing uh, for a, a DJ. 
and uh, fell in love. He was this uh, guy that was this very street dancer, and I was this uh, classically trained dancer. So it was pretty funny how we came together. But we ended up um, creating a company called The Legacy Project in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, we started a professional company there. And for 10 years, ran that. And then God said, there's something more. We want you to give it up. And um, so we just a year ago laid it down to come to uh, work with Bethel Church. And so we are now, um, my husband and I are working with uh, actually Bethel Conservatory of the Arts. I am the associate director now of the um, dance program there and I'm also working with the Bethel worship team as well. Um, so it's been an interesting thing because we just gave up, uh, you know, something that we've been working on for a long time to come to help build something in the middle of a pandemic. So that was an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. But um, it's been an awesome journey and we really, really, really love. Uh, man, the northern coast has been beautiful. So um, as I was actually um, thinking about today and just been praying over you guys and the people that were going to be here, um, God just gave me some words specifically that I would like to just kind of pour into you guys a little bit and what he's been kind of sharing with me in this crazy time. Um, but I always, uh, I like to go back to Job really quickly. And there's this um, scripture in Job, it's Job 42. It's actually the last chapter in Job. And um, it says, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no plans of yours can be thwarted. And I actually looked up that word today, thwarted, <laughs> because I was like, what does that mean? And, um, and actually I loved it because in the Hebrew definition, thwarted means is to cut off, is inaccessible, it's enclosed, literally closed off on all sides. So when Job says, I know that you can do all things and that no plans of yours can be cut off, or can be enclosed. And I, I thought that was such a very good specific word for today because I feel like right now as I'm talking to artists all over the world, um, that they feel like, man, the, the words that have been spoken over their lives or the promises that they've been trying to stand on, uh, even the dreams that we have been dreaming um, may seem like it's been shaken a little bit with all that's going on. And I feel like God is um, asking us to come back and to see what he's really doing and to trusting in the fact that he's always moving and he's always working. And um, I'm a little bit of a science nerd, so I'm going to throw in a little bit of science really quickly for you. <laughs> um, but when we get into uh, quantum physics, there is a word called um, popping the quiff. And basically, it just means that um, <laughs> you guys are like, wow, you're really getting there. Um, but no, it's basically all energy um, is in like a wave-like form until it's observed. Well, it's really interesting because they actually believe, like, in the, as far as the universe goes, they actually believe it's expanding because we're actually getting, getting the science or the um, instruments to look further. So they believe that the energy waves are just out there until someone observes them and then it appears into a solid object or what they call popping the quiff. What I love is, is that um, what scientists are discovering is that um, obviously if something has to be observed to become solid matter, then that means something has to be observing you at all times, something or someone, as I would like to say. And it just really hit me as I'm doing all of this studying is that, man, there's this time where as we're talking to artists that you feel like, man, there's just this isolation or, man, I'm, I'm in these four walls and I'm going a little crazy. But I feel like you need to know that in order for you to even exist, that God has to always observe. He has to observe your heart. He has to observe your lungs. He has to observe every little detail about you for you to even be an existence. Exist. And so as an artist, when you feel alone or you feel like you're discouraged, know that there is a God that is observing you and that there is nothing that can get in the way of his plans for you or your dreams, that he does the impossible and he does it every single day by observing who you are. And so just know that you are seen, know that this is a time that um, I love that and, and I will just, um, just stop for a quick second, but I just want to say that if he's observing you, then everything you do, you have have to create within him. Everything that you do is created within him. And so, um, and he gave you that gift to create just like he did when he made us. And so I just want to say that there are things like just we were talking about, man, um, about sheltering in place. This is the time to 
to shelter and to dream with God and see what is out there that he wants you to view and bring into existence. Right now, it is a, a man, it's just a level playing ground right now that God has just kind of leveled it out. And I really believe he's calling artists to be creative and to bring things forth into this, into this world that have never been designed or never been created. So I just want to encourage you guys that that is what I'm seeing. This is your chance to actually birth something into existence existence or popping a quip, whatever you want to call it, um, in, as if you want a science term, but it, that's what's happening right now is he's giving you the ability, the time to breathe and the time to dream with him um, so that you can create into an existence, maybe something that's never been. Maybe there's a movement inside of you that needs to be called out. Maybe there's a new genre of dance that needs to be birthed. I just think that there is something out there that God is wanting you to do. And I just want to encourage you guys that you are not alone in any of this. And if you feel that way, um, just go back to that, that there is no way that you are even walking this earth without being observed. And you're not even breathing without being observed. So um, I hope that encourages you guys because that all really encourages me as an artist when I'm uh, stuck at home and being like, man, I need to be creating. I feel like God is saying, it's okay, dream with me, because I'm about to show you things that don't even exist. So be excited, because the impossible resides within you guys, and I'm excited to see what you guys birth out right now. So thank you, Cynthia, so much for inviting me to this. This was incredible. So You are so welcome. She and I have some good conversations, and I just usually am like, whoa because I love science as well. And so we get to share a few little facts back and forth that she usually is like, blows me away with her. So thank you. And I, you'll see from the, um, the comments, people are really understanding that amazing depth of the natural and the physical and the spiritual. They are not inseparable. It's who our God is. So beautiful, brilliant. Juliana, we are so um, excited to hear from you. So. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Cynthia. And yeah, it's so exciting to see um, just artists from all over the world here. And just hearing some of this just gets me so excited to see where God is going with all this because, you know, this isn't the end of the story. We're in the middle of the book. So I'm really curious to see how all of this is going to play out and where God is going to lead. So anyway, um, yeah, thanks all three ladies who have shared. That was really inspiring, guys. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about leadership tonight. Um, I think for me in this pandemic, um, the hardest part has honestly been not the impacts on me, but the impacts on my team. So I am the artistic director of Ballet 58 in Chicago. Um, and we have, you know, a group of dancers. We've got about 14 dancers and we've got, um, I think, 30 staff in total. So when the pandemic kind of get, uh, got into full throttle and we got into lockdown here in Chicago, I think for me, the first thing, and I think for our leadership team was to go, okay, like, how do we effectively help our team to walk through this um, in a way that is going to be edifying and in a way that's going to be, um, I guess, just as a whole team unifying and bring us out to the other side? Because I think things like this have the potential to unify and to inspire, um, but they also have the potential to cause a lot of discourse and chaos, um, you know, if I'm really honest. And so I think at the beginning of all of this, um, God really put on my heart that if we are going to walk through this as Christians, it's not just about us as individuals, but it's about us as a group taking care of each other throughout um, this whole time. And that includes the artists in our care because it's really unstable right now. You know, and I think of all these young people that have moved to Chicago to dance with Ballet 58. And I'm like, man, like their whole livelihood, right? Their lives, their jobs, their everything is um, in my hands a little bit as a leader. And that's very uh, intimidating if I'm honest uh, as well to just go, wow, like there are so many practical things, like just like payroll, you know what I mean? Like just getting real with it, right? It's like, real, honest, practical things that have to be taken care of during this time. And um, I'm also a mom with three little kids. So uh, I've got them as well. And I think, you know, God has just been teaching me so much about relying on him in the very practical and nitty gritty. Um, just because, you know, I have some like girlfriends that are like, you know, they don't have kids, they're not leading anything. So they're, like, I'm like able to spend all this time in prayer and in the word. And I'm like, I would love that. But like, you know, my kids get me up at 6am. And then <laughs> by the time they're in bed, I'm like, quick, I got to answer emails, you know, or whatever it is. And so, um, 
I think my take on this has just been how do we as leaders in this pandemic draw from the strength of the Lord um, in those practical ways, because sometimes that can just be really overwhelming. And I think as leaders, we have to understand that one of our most important jobs, and I am totally stealing this from a guy named John Mark Comer. So all credit to him, credit where credit's due. Um, we as leaders have to learn to be a non-anxious presence in the center of all of this. And I think that that is huge. And I think good leadership stems from us being able to take a step back first and get healthy. And I had to do that for myself at the beginning of this. Um, and then from there to insert ourselves as a non-anxious presence in the midst of all the chaos. And I think we see that exemplified so beautifully in the life of Christ. Um, and it's just, you know, so directly in the gospels, you see him time and time again, walk into chaos and bring this beautiful non-anxious presence into it. Right. And, and everything is calm whether that's physically with him calming the storm and the sea, whether that's, um, you know, a little bit more metaphorically, like at the wedding when people are questioning him and he's like, no guys, this is God's work that I'm doing. Like, I'm sorry, but I need you guys to take a back seat right now to what God is doing in me and in this ministry. Um, in so many different ways, we see Jesus exemplify the beauty of what a non-anxious presence can look like. Um, and so I just want to give a couple practical things to leaders if you're overwhelmed. Um, number one, I would say is just allow yourself to grieve the future that you thought was there because for all of us we were dreaming right we're all like starry-eyed dreamers in this group so we all had plans we were building right we're like hard workers tenacious we're moving towards those goals and a lot of it was really thought out like it was prayed through you know what i mean like we were talking to jesus it wasn't like at least i'm you know i think for most of us it's not like we were going off on our own tangent we were all seeking god and following his will for our companies and our schools and this was a big loss it was a devastating loss and i think part of getting healthy for me, and this was funny, it was probably, I think, mid-April that I finally just like broke down for a second. I was like, I need to stop trying to solve problems and just grieve what I thought was going to happen next year and the year after and the year after because it's, it's not going to come to fruition, at least not the way I thought. And that's okay, but you need to take time for yourself at, with the Lord to grieve that because if you don't, that's going to turn into this root of bitterness, right? Or we're like, God, I thought you were promising this and this and this, and like now it's not coming to fruition, and this is a bitter pill. And so if we don't sit there and surrender that pain to Him, we're just going to be putting on this facade of like, no, I'm okay, I'm good, like it's all good, guys, you know, and it's really not. And um, we can't help anybody else until we've gone through that process of grief and just allowed ourselves to feel the sadness of it and then from there and I think this was me like like I said probably around the middle of April just going okay now that I've grieved this and I've allowed myself to process the pain of what I thought God was doing that has now been rerouted that has allowed me you guys to dream anew but before that my hands were so like full of grief I was just holding so much sadness over what I thought was going to happen and over the concerns I have for the people that I lead that I couldn't open my hands wide enough to take on what God has for me next. So I just want to encourage you guys if you're in that place as a leader. Um, First of all, and we know this but just to be reminded that you don't have to have all the answers and there's nothing wrong if right in this moment, you don't see all of X, Y, and Z points down the road of how this is all going to play out for your team. Um, because I know there's that pressure sometimes, even from like your board or from like a business plan perspective to go like, okay, I need to figure out what's next. Like, how are we going to make revenue during this time? And how are we going to do this? And how are we going to do that? Like all of that does need to be addressed, but it's also okay to take a step back for a moment and go, okay, I don't have the answer to this. And it is not all on my shoulders to save the people or the organization that I lead. And I think that that is such an important thing for us to recognize that God sees that and that he is over all of that as well. And he cares just as much, in fact, more so than we do about our people. And like, he cares that my people get paid. You know, he cares that there's a paycheck there for them to pay their bills. He cares that um, each one of us, the things that he's been growing and building in us, he cares about those things. They're not um, superfluous. They're not just a waste, right? God has been birthing those things in us for a long time now as artists. And this pandemic doesn't mean that all of that was a waste, but it does mean that God is going to have to show us how to rebuild in a different way. Um, and I just, uh, Psalm 127 has been on my heart a lot. I'm just going to read the first couple of verses, but it says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. 
It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Um, and it goes on, but just to remember that it's okay to grieve, it's okay to not have all the answers, but then at the same time to say, okay, God is in control of this building process. He always has been, he always will be. And once we're able to kind of let go of some of that uh, pain of what we've been walking through, he is gonna be able to start building anew. And when we build in him, um, that is always gonna last. And there is no, no thing this side um, of eternity that can get in the way of who God is, right? God is working continually. He is with us. He is building in us. Um, but don't let that, I guess, scare you from saying, I need to grieve and I need to be a person and I need to take a step back and I need to be healthy so that I can lead in a healthy way. And God knows the particulars. He knows the rent is due. You know, he knows all of that and he's with you in that. So just be encouraged because um, it's hard right now. And um, there's a lot of things that we have to problem solve together as an arts community of how to survive on a very practical level, but to know that God is over that and in that and through that and around that and under that um, and that we can release that into his care while also being good leaders um, and being practical leaders and inserting that non-anxious presence into our communities to let people know hey I don't have the answers but I do have Jesus um, and that's that's what we're going to use to get through this because he is the only thing that we've been clinging to so far right and a pandemic's not going to change any of that he is still there he hasn't moved he hasn't changed his address he hasn't uh, gone anywhere and so in that sense yes we're rebuilding from the ground up but if we've been building on Jesus already we're right there still with him in his arms right we haven't actually changed a thing and that's kind of been um what God has just been reminding me of of like Juliana this isn't a huge departation from what you normally do <laughs> he's like you normally listen to me and ask me what to do and then take a step so how is this different I'm like oh yeah <laughs> this is the same thing right so as long as we build in the Lord and trust in him for that next step like we always have um you know we're gonna be okay and um I just I just want to speak that over us guys we're gonna be okay as long as we stay in step with the Lord um and that that labor that we do is built on him um it's not in vain. It's not in vain. So thanks for being here, you guys, and hearing my heart. And yeah, it's, I think more than uh, my time. So I'm going to pass it on. No, it's just the right amount of time. That's gorgeous. Um, and I, I really appreciate that grieving perspective. And all of us have grieved something in our life along our journey. And prayerfully, we are all on the other side of that from when that happened. And in that we were met in comfort and in that we were met with renewal and birth and rebirth. And so thank you for that beautiful, beautiful reminder. All right, we have Misty joining us now. Misty, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks to everybody. I just personally delight in seeing these common threads. It's like coming almost and listening to verbal choreography, right? And it's like, none of us knew what we were going to, you know, bring or what somebody else was going to bring. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like she has the piece for this and all it's, it's like this work that is the word to share right now. So I don't know, I'm going to add a few steps here to this verbal choreography. So if you were here last time, I talked a little bit about how, you know, we were kind of going through this calendar life, uh, Kronos life, if you will, and then boom, this pandemic, which is a Kairos moment you know, pops into the middle because we have two words for time, right? Like, hey, what time do we be there? And I'm having a great time. So this was the what time do you be here, which is, oh, I have rehearsal and we have a show and we have this thing or a dream and it's this. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're having a difficult time. Like this difficult time thing comes into it. And I said, you know, what happens is for the moment that Kairos moment pushes the Kronos down, but eventually that Kronos rises back up and it becomes in conflict with the um, excuse me, just a minute. Sorry, we're wrapping presents in the background and I couldn't hear for a moment. So I'm asking her to stop wrapping for just a moment. That's real life right there. I have five kids. <laughs> so, so what happens is, you know, the, the, this pandemic pops in, but it, you've already seen it, right? Like the push of the calendar just comes up against it, right? The bill that needs to be paid, the payroll that needs to be 
put out, the people that need to be taken care of. And, you know, as the conversation around this shifts towards those practical matters, which I, which I so appreciated, um, just want to share a couple of things that are on my heart. So in my, um, outside of my mom life of five, which is going on in my background here, I lead 300 dance schools serving 120,000 kids a week. So uh, we license the management systems out of my dance studio to these other dance studios. So, um, you know, there are moments where I feel this crushing, you know, like near strangling pressure of like, I got to keep these 300 schools alive. And then I realize, like, no, that's not my job. Like, what's my job and what's God's job, which really lines up with what's been said here. So I would just ask you to ask yourself, whenever you feel this, just ask yourself, like, what's my job and what's God's job and make sure you don't have the wrong job. It's no different than choreography, right? Like if you're not dancing your part, I mean, I still remember this. I was dancing for Dance Revolution two years ago and this massive guy I was dancing with, I was in the wrong place. He literally came and picked me up and plopped on stage, like live, like picked me up, plopped me over into my spot. It took like half a second. We just kept on going. I'm like, oh, great example of like, I was not doing my job. I was trying to be in his space doing his job, right? And I don't want to get in God's space doing his job. I have this image of he'd be like, oh, girlfriend, pick you up and put you back over here. I would rather not waste that time, even if it's a second. I'd rather just be where I'm supposed to be with him. So, so here, so that's number one. Ask, what's my job? What's his job? When you feel the water rising. Okay, second thing that I want to share. When you look forward, and we've all heard something here tonight about God is doing a new thing and do the new thing with him and in him. And I think of the verse in Romans, I think um, I've got it open here, the end of Romans 11, all things were created by him and for him and in him, all things hold together, right? So it's like, again, being in with him, letting him do his piece of the work. But as you go forward, be careful how much of the old you pine for and drag with you into the new. Right? I think there's going to be a massive, especially in marketing and advertising. If you watch TV, it's very nostalgic. Like back when we could talk to each other and hug each other, we could go do these things and like back for the what was. And I really have a strong sense that we are not to drag most of the what was into the what isn't yet. Right? Because it's going to crowd out in Ephesians 3.20 opportunity for him to do exceedingly abundantly more than all we ever asked for or imagined right? We bring in the old, I mean, or to think of the verse about how you can't put new wine into old wineskins, it'll burst, right? We got this new thing, and we can't put it into a new structure. So that's the second thing that I'm thinking about, is just be careful about how much of the old you drag forward with you, because I'm probably not alone in having some, what I would call unconscious unhappiness in my old life, right? Things that just, it's like, I don't know. It's just like when you move into a house, it's pristine. And then over time, it's like, oh my gosh, how to get all this stuff on the counter. And, you know, in your schedules like that, and your work is like that, like, how did I end up saying yes to all of this stuff and doing all these things? And they, they were good things, but not great things. And some things were great things and not God things. And some things were God things and not right now things. So I want to be very careful not to drag what isn't for the new time forward into the future. And here, here's the last thing that I want to share. I think we all need to wrestle with a dynamic tension as we as we look forward. So I, I first said, what, what's your job? What's God's job? So as we look forward, there's a dynamic tension. I wrote this down so that I don't mess it up. We have to fully depend on God and yet be fully prepared. And that seems like, like it's in conflict, but I don't think it is. We're fully depending on him to make the way and to lead us and guide us. But, oh my, like don't get to where he, when he like opens the gate for where he wants you to be or do and be unprepared, right? Don't be unprepared. I wrote down physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, even financially. I mean, I don't think there's a person here who, um, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure glad I, um, and being stretched in these ways, right? I mean, maybe you are glad, but I'm just saying like even financially, right? Yes, we fully depend on him, but as Juliana said, there's practical matters, right? Like, have we been good stewards? I know I could have been as a good steward with a lot of um, days and paychecks, right? If you wanna know what matters, look, look, at, look at your check register and your calendar. That will tell you what mattered, right? So as we go forward and we 
we, we fully rely on him to open the doors and pave the path, but let us not get to the place where the door opens and we are standing unprepared for whatever that is. So um, last thing I wanna share is um, you are essential workers. So we hear a lot about essential workers. You are essential workers. So God has a job, you have a job, um, don't bring unnecessary things with you into your new workers field. And when he opens the door for your essential work, be prepared. You are some of the most essential workers. And I think about, you know, all these examples in God's word where the battle of any kind was supposed to happen. You know, the dancers and the worshipers went on the forefront. They led the way. So you are the ultimate essential worker. And I hope you're encouraged by that. Thanks for letting me be here. Mm, so good. Wow, so good. Thank you, Misty. Um, and I, it wasn't necessarily intentional that I put all the ladies first, but we did go first. And thank you, gentlemen, for being patient and waiting because just being prayerful over what um, I thought was going to potentially be um, presented. So Matthew, we welcome you and are so thankful that you're joining us tonight and are ready to hear from you. So again, thank you ladies so much for sharing already. Thank you, Cynthia. And I'm so glad you put all the ladies first because I've just been ministered to. <laughs> I, um, when Cynthia first sent me the invite, uh, I responded to her with a topic, but I, I was honest with her. I said, I'm, you know, I'm struggling in this because I'm still living it out. Like I haven't kind of received a complete revelation in this. Um, so that's why I'm even more grateful because I feel like a lot of the missing links, I just heard them. I, I, I just received a lot of those things that I was missing. So I, um, I'm so grateful and thankful um, for everybody that just shared. I, um, my word is capacity. One of the things that the Lord has been working on me is my capacity. I recently in February became the associate artistic director for the Ailey company. And <clears throat> I was only in that position for a month before the pandemic hit. And even being in the position, um, it was daunting in many ways, just you know things that I have not experienced yet and so a lot of unknowns um and as i felt like i was kind of getting uh uh i guess adapting then everything kind of went crazy i'm i'm an introvert so i was actually excited about being home <laughs> with myself <laughs> and the lord um but then uh the lord start literally stretching my capacity meaning the things that i've kind of uh avoid it, the, the deep relationships with family, deep relationships with friends. And then I even also started therapy. Um, one of the things that was hard within the pandemic, uh, I had never had to carry others as well, as far as, especially what Juliana was talking about as a leader, it's not just you that you that you carry, it's 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 the people that you lead. And I had never carried such a heavy burden in that way. I am very close with the dancers. Uh, and so I'm hearing stories of their families. I'm hearing them crying on the phone. Um, and I had never had to function in that way. A lot of a lot of my relationships were were professional and you know there were some mentoring relationships but to hear to hear grief and to hear tears and to hear questions that you don't have answers for um it just it was heavy and i really didn't know how to deal with it and that was one of the reasons i kind of went into therapy because i actually had time to do it um but in the midst of all this um everything else continued on, the work, the family. Um, and that's when I felt like it was, it was starting to get rough. And then that's when the Lord started ministering to me about capacity. Literally, I was just praying um, and I just heard the word capacity. So I start 
looking into it and um and one of the revelations that I got was embracing mystery i I'm one I like to i even I, I choreograph a little bit I like the whole piece to be thought out the music, the lighting, the costumes, I have charts. I mean, everything is just written down. So this whole idea of mystery, um, even though it's, you would assume that something that you should be used to when you're dealing with someone as, as majestic as the Lord, but um, <laughs> I just don't, I, it's just a hard thing. <laughs> and um, he's pushed me to embrace mystery. Uh, Cheryl started, Cheryl shared some things, that moment by moment thing, uh, practicing the presence of the Lord moment by moment, even if you don't totally understand, even if you don't, even if you're not operating in a rubber, sorry, operating in a full revelation of what he's doing. It's something about, sorry, there's something about embracing the mystery. And the more and more I'm, I'm in that place of, um, the scripture that I've been meditating on one that I've heard, you know, time and time, but, uh, trusting the Lord with all your heart and leaning out into your own understanding. It's just this moment has taken me a deep, taken me deeper into that, um, that scripture. So one of the things that, um, like I said, I'm still working through this, uh, but I have experienced some of the most beautiful moments in my entire walk with the Lord in the midst of the weight and the burden that I'm experiencing and carrying. And as crazy as it sounds, I don't think I would give it up for anything. I would, I would do it all again just to have been able to experience the closeness of God in the midst of the mystery and the weight. Um, and that's where I am. It's a beautiful place and the honesty um, and I think again as as leaders we all have a different understanding of what we're being called to now but it really is helping us to understand what are we made of and then what you're articulating about that capacity we really are able to do much more than what we think we can do and that is only because of who god is that he does exceedingly abundantly beyond and when we're looking internally it really gives us a very small limited view of ourselves but he as we you know we're hearing he views us not as we sometimes see ourselves praise god thank god thank you matthew thank you Darrell. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Cynthia. And thank you everybody for being here. Uh, it's been, it is truly an honor to be able to share with you all tonight. Uh, my name is Darrell Comedy and my wife and my two daughters live in Monroe, North Carolina. It's just south of Charlotte. And prior to that, I lived in New York City in Brooklyn for close to 11 years, was a professional dancer with the Met, Limon Company, and most recently Mark Morris Dance Group and the Lord called my wife and I to this area to be in ministry at a church, uh, First Baptist Church of Indian Trail. I'm uh, one of the worship leaders there. And, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> and, and, and what I've been, I've, that's something that I'm learning right now in this season that everything's kind of been squashed or put, to a, put on pause and reset as um, Thera said earlier is that what I really feel that God is, is reminding and revealing to me is, is my identity. So who I am and who all of you are. And for so many years, I've labeled myself as a particular thing. For some of us in here, we've called ourselves a black person or a, uh, a, a scientific guru or whatever the thing that we find so much identity in and from now being in this new new land new territory of not being around people that i i know or familiar with in a position that i don't know a whole lot about um my identity has been challenged and uh, i've had to go through a lot of 
kind of rediscovering who am I and what have I given my whole life to and my whole world to and now it's suddenly a new aspect of that has been revealed and so I go and so I go okay well this is who God has called me to be in this time and now the time where I had where God was just revealing or just opening up opportunities for me to be able to walk and exercise the gift of being a worship leader they all shut down and they all got cut got cut out and uh, then it's like okay so God I can't do it what do I who am I where do I go and then I was uh just kind of going to the Lord communicating with him and saying help me who am I and I was drawn to Colossians 1 verse 27 where it says for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles as well and this is the secret Christ lives in you this gives you assurance of sharing his glory. In other translations, it says Christ in us, the hope of glory. I cannot find hope in the fact that I'm gonna have an opportunity to lead on a platform to other people with thousands or hundreds or however many the capacity is to encounter the presence of God. I can't find hope in that. I can't find hope in the fact that one day I'll dance again. I can't find the hope in those things. Anything that is horizontal, anything that is on this kind of latitude, there's zero hope in that. And while they're good things, while they're God ordained things, they're not Christ. And Christ is our hope, he's our identity. And so for many of us in here, we lead with, I'm the dancer with such and such, or I'm the director of this, and I am that, and I'm that. I mean, I did it today in my announce, in my introduction, but the reality is the core, the thing that's unshakable, the thing that will not ever change is the hope that we have in Christ and that the fact that Christ lives in us. And because he lives in us, he equips and empowers us to do whatever our next assignment is, whatever our next agenda or whatever the, the next step is. But the hope, the thing that's unshakable, the thing that will cause you to operate in your full capacity, the thing that will cause you to not uh, lose sight of the, of the vision that he's given you is hope in Jesus. And some of us in this in this Zoom uh, call may not have that type of encounter, may not have that, may not be embracing that truth. And we are here to create a space for you to ask the question: How how on earth do I remove my sexuality? How on earth do I remove my race? How do I remove my um, position at work or my ethnicity or whatever it is that we found so much hope and the ability to do this too, like this is me and I'm not letting go of that. Well, yes, we need to have that type of grip, but the grip on the word and the promise and the, the truth of who Jesus Christ is, because that never changes. It has remained the same. It has stood the test of time. The people who have put their hope in Jesus, the Bible says those who put their hope in Christ will never be put to shame. And I can tell you, I can attest that in my life and my marriage and my family and my ministry, when I have put my hope in Christ. I have never once been put to shame. I've never regretted putting my hope and my trust in a, uh, in, in a God who is always there. And even though we may not feel it, we may not sense it, we may not see it, he's truly there. And that's what makes it unshakable. That's what makes it hopeful. That's why we can experience the glorious riches of his kingdom. And so I encourage everyone here that while we had plans, while we you know, we are performers, we're this, we're all of these things, and they're all given to us as gifts from the Lord, the thing that will never shake, because guess what, we're going to get older, and our bodies are going to, you know, do whatever they do, and we won't be able to dance, or something can happen to my voice, something can happen to whatever, but the thing that will never change, the thing that will never be, the, ne the thing that will never waver, and the thing that will never fade, is the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. What he did on that cross to remove our sin, to remove our guilt, to remove all the things that we found so much hope and identity in, they are now squashed and they're gone away. And they're meaningless, as it says in Ecclesiastes. They're meaningless because of the hope that we have in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this time, Cynthia. And I'm so grateful to be able to share and look forward to the rest that will come forth. Thank you so much. Um, just what resonated for me is that um, God is not subject to circumstance. And what you're articulating is just our hope. It's not subject to any kind of circumstances. Thank you, Darrell.
Brother Steve. Hey everyone, uh, Steve Rooks here. Um, for those of you who don't know, I uh, currently teach, my passion is teaching. Um, I, I, I mentor, I'm, I'm a teacher at Vassar College and formerly danced for years with the Graham Company. Um, and uh, again, it's a pleasure to be here just, just to share my heart. And it's not very different from when I shared before. I, uh, it's interesting how kind of sometimes the Lord parks you at a place. Um, when Cynthia asked me about uh, sharing um, and about what I talk about, I kind of kept this clever kind of three Ps, you know, uh, preparing for the possible paradigm. Uh, and, and while my heart is still with, with that preparation, um, I have to really put a face to it um, in terms of this, what preparation really means. Um, one of the things that's been out of a byproduct of where we're at now with this pandemic is that we're all sheltered in. We're kind of done with it. We don't want to see, you know, we're seeing numbers that keep going up. We don't see any hope and they, the vaccine's coming. It's not coming. This is, this, you know, there's all of this uh, espionage going on. It's just it's overwhelming and you're kind of at that place. Uh, but this pastor said something and it kind of really did a shift for me. Was he saying that we've been so focused on preventing the virus that, um, we're no longer uh, concerned about seeing the revival and that seeing the opportunity, seeing that this is, this is an opportunity as never before to see God's glory revealed. And in order to do that, we've got to listen to people's stories. Um, you know, I put a couple of things on my Facebook page. Um, one was uh, an article called, um, the coronavirus means curtains for artists. And another one was called Shelter. And uh, um, both of them were from pers real perspectives of where people are living now. Um, especially Shelter, it's, just a, it's the testimony of all these, these dancers um, from major companies and they just kind of, you know, they, they end up doing a piece that's very celebratory, but they're, they're, they're bearing their hearts out. And I think that as believers, you know, we're, we're being equipped, we have the glory, you know, we have God's provision and protection and preparation. But we got to hear these stories because people are going to be at a really different place coming out of this. And some of them have lost hope. Everything was flatlined, you know, whether you were a principal with a, you know, a top tier company or you were dancing in a school in Baffin Island, Canada, you know, it doesn't matter. Everything was flatlined. We're all at this place of just oneness. And, and in that, there's some really hard places that people are at. I, I know a lot of friends who've lost loved ones. Uh, from the virus, you know, uh, some have lost parents. And so there's a, there's a reality, but, I, but there's hope that we have that's got to minister to those, those people at that reality there. Um, Zoom, unfortunately, isn't going to leave us. You know, um, there's this new term now. We're not, you know, people who do Zoom, we're Zoomigos. You know, and so, we're, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole community that's arising now. And I don't think all of that's going to leave once the, the virus, you know, the virus is, is subsided or leaves us. I think that that's going to be a new part of this and part and parcel of what we're going to have to face as believer artists, you know, that this is going to be a new growing idiom that people are going to continue to use. And what does that look like? You know, how comfortable are we going to be, you know, with this new reality that this may be an area of ministry that we'll have to adapt to. Uh, but in the process of, of looking at the virtual reality faces, it's understanding the stories behind it. And I, I just would encourage us in this season to really listen to the stories, the people who are really out there that need to know the love of Christ, but also where they're at, the glowing reality. It's like, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've only known dance. I was, you know, this is, this is what I was designed to do. God gave me this gift to do, and, and I don't know what to do now. And as they're standing there with their arms open and, and wanting answers, we can, you know, at, meet them at that place, meet them at that plateau, and offer them the love of Christ, offer them reality of hope. And that also the surety of our foundation and real existence never, as Darrell was saying, never lies within the realm of, of this present earth. We're looking for something even greater. And although we don't want to be all pie in the sky, we, we want to meet people where they're at and, and just letting them know that, um, you know, we, we, we hear your heart. Um, I do believe God is going to be birthing some very creative things. It's not going to look anything like what we used to do. Uh, I think a lot of things are going to really change, but it's nothing to get fearful for. It's a great opportunity. So I just, just wanted to share that with you all. I, I, I so applaud my colleagues and all that they've been depositing and sharing. I, I, those are real jewels, uh, you know, but uh, I think this is a great time of getting equipped. So just thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Steve. Brother Randy, we are ready for you.
Yeah, if, uh, if you guys are taking notes, uh, I have an interesting title for what I want to share, and it's The Troubables with Zerubbabel. <laughs> um, to just kind of give a brief background on Zerubbabel. Uh, Zerubbabel is one of the captives in Babylon. Uh, chances are that this individual uh, was actually born in Babylon. Uh, so he wasn't one who was exiled there. He was among the exiles, but he had actually been born in Babylon. Um, and he is chosen and commissioned uh, by both the king of Persia, King Cyrus, as well as, of course, commissioned by God, because God ordained this and put it up on the heart of King Cyrus to return to Jerusalem for one particular assignment to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Well, what temple? It was Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple in all of its glory, in all of its beauty, but that temple had been destroyed. But let's just say that uh, Zerubbabel wasn't witness to that because again, he was born in Babylon. He heard the stories, I'm sure, but he wasn't a witness to that atrocity. So basically, this young leader is given an assignment, an assignment from the king of Persia, but the assignment really comes from God. And how many of you guys, as young leaders, you were given an assignment, and you were so overwhelmed and impacted by that, uh, you did a celebration dance, uh, you got promoted to something, God entrusted you with something, he put a vision in your heart, and man, it's like, okay, 100%, I'm going to go for this. And so I think Zerubbabel is a little bit frustrated because some people are going to go with him, but a lot of people don't want to go. They don't want to make the journey. And I think as a young leader, that's frustrating when you've got a new vision in your heart and you're thinking, what's wrong with these people? Why don't, want they, why don't they come and follow me? And uh, so Zerubbabel departs uh, from Babylon. His name actually means out of Babylon, which I find quite interesting. He departs from Babylon with the remnant. And again, he's got all this zeal and enthusiasm. I remember when the Lord first put on my heart to build this community for artists that would be called Adeo. The zeal and the enthusiasm were so great that I didn't always look at the practicalities because I was dancing in the zeal and the enthusiasm of it all. But uh, Zerubbabel actually arrives into this place that he's only heard about and maybe he even heard of the stories of a land that was flowing with milk and honey. But guess what? When he gets there, that is not what he finds. It is not a land that's flowing with milk and honey. It's not a city of gold. It's a city that has been ruined. It's a city that has been decimated and destroyed and, uh, and it's tough. And it's really tough when your initial zeal gets penetrated when your vision gets cast down, when you were expecting one thing, but then you get there and you see it's a completely different thing. So he sees the ruins. And yes, that's discouraging, but he still has a vision. And so he still, you know, takes on his assignment and his task. He's got a buddy there, uh, Jeshua, the high priest, uh, you need that, you need that buddy system. And he's got that buddy with them. And so even though they see, okay, this isn't gonna be the easy task that we thought, we're still going to proceed. So they begin to proceed and then all of a sudden, opposition, opposition from the enemies that were in the land, the Samaritans, other individuals who brought threats and just really great uh, discouragements. Um, and it, that was challenging because then it also began to discourage Zerubbabel's own people as well. And so again, here's a leader facing this outward opposition, 
but then also these inner struggles. And there were also factions of his own people. There were divisions within his own people. Uh, there was sin in the camp. So Zerubbabel has a lot on his hands. If you think about it, it's threefold. It's like the perfect storm. He's returned to a place where he didn't really know what he was about to get into, and it's in ruins. And then there's opposition from enemies, and then there's struggles from within. Anybody ever been there? Raise your hands. <laughs> yes, <laughs> been there, done that. Uh, and so, you know, at this point, it's, it's heartbreaking, it's discouraging. But then, you know that expression, the straw that broke the camel's back? Well, <laughs> the opposition was so devious. They wrote to the new king of Persia at the time, and they said, look, you can't trust these people, and if they rebuild, they're going to turn against you, and uh, these people have a reputation. So guess what happened? The government shut it down. <laughs> they said, stop the building. Well, I tell you what, for Zerubbabel and Jeshua, the high priest, that was it. That was the final straw. They, they, they had endured. Uh, they tried to pep talk their people. But then at this point, too much is too much. Anybody ever been there? Come on, people, let's be honest. <laughs> it's like, okay, too much is too much. Um, so guess what? Uh, history shows that between 14 to 18 years, that temple was not touched. It stayed there in ruins. Now realize that between the time of Zerubbabel's departing from Babylon and the time of Nehemiah and Ezra, it's about a 60 year span. So can you imagine all of this happening within 60 years? Then 14 to possibly 18 years, there is no work on the temple. People are trying to self-protect. Um, they're trying to self-survive. Uh, they're trying to build their own work. But the work of God in the initial assignment that was given has been neglected. So this is a really grueling time. And, and of course, you know, we don't hear from Zerubbabel at that time. So he may be in his home in self-pity. Uh, same with Joshua, the high priest. What's going on with these guys for 14 years? Uh, what's happening to the leadership? What's happening to the initial assignment? And he who begins a good work in you is faithful to complete it. And God is the Alpha and the Omega of everything that he calls into being. And so in the grace of God, in the economy of God, he sends two amazing prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. And both of these men become such vocal mouthpieces to Zerubbabel and also to Jeshua, the high priest. They don't condemn them. Never did those prophets condemn the men. But the prophets were used by God to speak God's truth, to revive their spirits, to revive their hearts. I just want to read a, a few little scriptures here. I won't be long, I promise you. Um, I want to look at Haggai chapter 1 and looking at verse 13. Let me read that to you real quick. Um, so chapter 1, and I'm sorry, yes. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 13. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. So I just want to stop there. The Lord spoke through the prophet to this man, this leader that was discouraged, to remind him, I'm with you. That's all it took. Just those simple words. I'm with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is at your side. And it said, when that took place, the spirit man, we all have a spirit man. We have a spirit person. <laughs> this is the way that God has crafted us. The spirit of Zerubbabel was stirred up within him. Same with Jeshua, the high priest, and then also 
the people as well. And so the work began again, um, but there were still things that became uncomfortable. And here's something that we don't usually speak about or it's normally not addressed when we read through the prophet Haggai and also Zechariah. Um, as the temple was being rebuilt, there were people who came back as a remnant who knew what the former temple had looked like. They had been there. Of course, they were a lot older now. Uh, and uh, as the temple was actually completed, uh, or almost completed, these men, or these people, began to weep. Um, and uh, a question was asked, who saw this temple in its former position? Well, how do you see it now? And for some of those individuals, they thought, well, this is not the same temple. It's not as beautiful. It is not as glorious. It's not the same dance company as it was before. Uh, they're not doing the same work. They're not on the same stages. Uh, they're not wearing the same costumes, uh, on and on and on. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're trying to rebuild, but hey, but we remember the way that it was, and this is not the way that it was, and so therefore this is grievous to us. Others were rejoicing because it's all they knew, basically. So some were rejoicing, you heard the, 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 the singing, but you also heard the weeping going on at the same time. But realize, this can also be discouraging for a leader. So yeah, you got a shot in the arm by the prophets, you got revived, you went back and you did your work that you were called originally to do. So the temple was rebuilt and you're just hoping that everybody's gonna celebrate this, but not everybody's celebrating it because some are still longing for what was, like what Misty was sharing with us. Some were still longing for what was before, but now there's a new thing happening. And it's interesting because God was far from being disappointed with the new thing, far from it. Even though it did not look like Solomon's temple, it didn't have all the stage production to it. It was very basic, you know. Juliana sent me an email today and we're on the same page. She was talking about taking her company outdoors, going into public parks and things like this. This is what we're also talking about with Ideum now new beginnings for us, uh, new ways of reaching out to people, new ways of surfing. So it might not look like a dam when we've completed our season. You know, we were dancing on big stages with nice costumes and lights. Uh, we may be facing the building of a, a new temple now, not the one that we knew before. And surely people are going to compare. Uh, well, wow, Randy, I mean, come on. You, you, you want us to go dance in a park? Uh, that's, that's, that's not what we were accustomed to. That's not the, the glory of what we've known before. But this is what God promises, that the glory of the latter house will even be more glorious than that of the former. And God also spoke to the prophets and said, don't despise the small beginnings. And guys, this is the time of new beginnings. Don't despise the new beginnings of the new work of building on what God has called us to build. And then this was the beautiful thing. Both Zechariah and Haggai keep speaking to Zerubbabel. The word of the Lord, speak to Zerubbabel. Tell him, dude, you are God's signet ring. This is the way that God is going to use you. You are his ring bearer, basically. You've been given his seal of authority. Know who you are. Don't lose your sense of calling. He who began a good work in you was faithful to complete it. Uh, we are his workmanship. We've been created for those good works that he's ordained in Christ from the foundation of the world that we should walk in them. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. His plans, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and to hope. So, these incredible prophets are reminding Zerubbabel of who he is and the promises of God over his life. But then to me, one of the most beautiful chapters, and I do not want to destroy this at all, so I want to turn to it. This is Zechariah's vision. 
in chapter four of the book of Zechariah. And this has been speaking to my heart ever since yesterday in such a deep way. Zechariah is after he receives this incredible vision about Jeshua the high priest. And I would encourage you guys to read that because that's absolutely glorious. But then the angel of the Lord wakes him up again to give him this vision of the lampstand and the olive trees. And I just want to start because of time. I just want to read uh, starting with verse um, Yeah, kind of like the middle of verse five. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. So this is what God is speaking to Zechariah to deliver to Zerubbabel. And I love this. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? before Cynthia, before Matthew, before Steve, before all of you, before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he who shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace. The word capstone means the completion, and he shall bring forth the completion with shouts of grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. The completion happens by the grace of God, not by might, not by power, but by the grace of God. And his grace towards you is not in vain. What his grace has begun in your life is supernatural. It's been made by covenant with you. It's sealed by the blood of Jesus. What he begins in you, he is the one who is faithful to complete that. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel, your hands, my friends, have laid the foundations of this temple. His hands will also finish it. I've called him to start it and I've called him to finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. You have been entrusted with a plumb line of the assignment that God has entrusted to you. So yes, he who began a good work in you definitely concerns your salvation. No doubt about that. But it also concerns the assignment of God. Some of his assignments are short term. Some of his assignments in, in our lives are lifelong assignments. Jesus said this in the book of John, chapter 17. I have glorified my father because I have completed the assignment that he called me to do. At this point, Zerubbabel can say the same thing. But you know what? We all can say the same thing. And what we can rejoice in today is the fact that it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Spirit of God. The vision of the lampstand was a reminder of the illumination and the oil of the Spirit of God. That's why the olive branches were there that were next to the illumination of the lampstand. It's about the oil, the plentifulness of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the spirit of God within us is more than capable. And what God has equipped us, like he equipped Bezalel as an artist filled with the spirit of God, what he's called you to do, he will complete through you. And so that doesn't mean, like Juliana said to us, there aren't going to be times of grieving. There aren't going to be times when I say out of my holy mouth, oh, crap, you have got to be kidding me. Like, this is what I have to work with. This is in ruins, or I'm being discouraged from the outside, or I don't have enough finances, whatever it may be. Yeah, those discouragements come, and then sometimes we just want to isolate ourselves even more than the required isolation and just say, hey, I just want to hide out. Thank God for the prophets. Those of you who have spoken today, you have been like prophets to my heart, and I mean that sincerely. Thank all of you for being prophets to my heart to encourage me in my Zerubbabel calling. Yes, the troubles of Zerubbabel, 
but the Lord delivers us from those troubles and the capstone is completed with shouts of grace, grace, grace. Glory be to God. I am what I am because of the grace of God that there is in Christ Jesus. His grace is sufficient for you, my friends. His grace is sufficient to complete your salvation. His work is sufficient to complete the assignment that he's ordained in your life. There is no principality or power. There is no enemy of hell that can pull you from that place. There's no coronavirus that can take you from that place. Christ has secured it for you. And so hold to that truth. I speak that you are Zerubbabel's, each and every one of you, and I bless your Zerubbabel calling. I bless it in Jesus' name. And I speak as Zechariah, I speak as a Haggai into your life. And I say, you hold the signet ring of Lord, of the Lord. You have his seal of approval. You have the plumb line in your hand. So it's not by might, it's not by power, but be of good courage, Zerubbabel. The Lord is with you and the Lord will reignite your spirit. So I bless you today with this truth in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Um, a couple of things are just coming to heart and mind and just one visual. I've got this little cord right here. And as you're talking about that plumb line that is anchored and weighted, it's got to be connected to something that is going to hold on to it with a surety. <clears throat> and that's the eyes of what, whom, is looking at us, God, that Shana was talking about. We are seen, but we're also held by this God. And that is the test of what true ver verticality is, is a plumb line. It's the only way to really determine true verticality. And if we are holding it ourselves, then we're not going to have the best understanding of what that is. It's got to be held by our God that is really assuredly going to present what is that true verticality. And as you were speaking also, it just came to heart and mind, this understanding of being a servant. And we're looking at where now, God, am I going to serve? And we get some of our own um, a bias or opinions or, you know, priorities or, or um, preferences in there. But a real true servant doesn't choose where they serve it's chosen for them and when we understand that god is choosing us and choosing where and how and what it's going to look like then there's a freedom in knowing that there's a master that we are subject to as we're serving so I'd love to hear any other um, comments or responses. It can come from the leaders or if there's questions, you can put that in the chat if you want um, a leader to respond to that. And, and you know, we're all leaders. We all have different um, spheres of influence and things that we've been entrusted with by God. But just would love to um, he hear any other comments or um, just affirmations. I, I'll just start out. Just want to say thank you guys so much for those that spoke after. Um, after I, I did, I just was so incredibly blessed. I still feel blessed. I feel like there's so much. I, th I think there's some kernels that we all need to stick around for if you have the time tonight. Because I, I think throughout this experience that our hearts have been stirred, and that um, that there's going to be some things shared tonight that are going to be specifically for some of you here. Uh, even prophetic words, things that are specifically going to carry you um, in, in this next journey. W one of the things that I just wanted to comment on was when Randy, when you were talking about the lifelong journey, uh, that really hit me because 
and the grace around that. Because for leaders here, I don't know about you, but immediately when you hear that lifelong journey, you know what that is. You know what that call is on your life. It might be something as simple as, I know I'm supposed to tell people about Jesus. It, it could be, it'd be a one sentence thing, God, but God has commanded us to do something really specific. And while we're pursuing that, it's, it, it does through life. It goes through seasons where sometimes you wake up and you think, am I even still doing this? Um, but I want to encourage you and say, yes, you're still doing it. It might not look like it, feel like it, but that call is within you and praise God, he will rescue us back to his calling in our lives. And um, I'm so thankful for community because in forums like this, it's like that spirit, we're reminded that um, what he birthed through us is for his glory. We get to be a part of it, but as Shana was saying, nothing can thwart that plan. So there's the re just the assurance of knowing, even like what Misty was saying, what's my job? What's his job? God, here I am. Today, I'm a hot mess. Tomorrow, things look more promising. But again, all of that is part and parcel of um, God's, God's work throughout the, the life, the journey that we lead. And um, we're going to get to the end of it. We're going to get to the end of that journey and, and we're going to hear well done, good and faithful servant. Um, so just want to just speak that life over you guys as leaders that God is saying that well done. You know, um, we may not, we like, we don't have the answers, but we do have the thing he, uh, to which he's called us to do. We know what that is for, for most of us. Some of us younger leaders, we're still finding that. But you, you know, there's kernels and essences of things that he's calling you to and paths, directions he's leading you to, down. So we have at least a part of it. Some of us have been around longer and, and, and we've journeyed longer and we, we feel like we, we see a bit more of a trajectory. But again, all of it goes back to what Darrell was saying that it's all the same path because it's all leading back to Christ. And, and that's something that, that we all share and it's so beautiful. And so um, mysterious and, and unique, like you're saying, Matthew, it's just, it is, it is mysterious, but it's, it's, um, it's times like this where you feel the presence of God and you go, thank you. Okay, let's keep going. We don't know what it's going to look like, but, um, but we, we can feel and sense that we're moving in the right direction. I am so moved right now. I can barely find words. And I'm so encouraged that there's so many different types of leaders and in different seasons and that you're persevering to do what God called you to, what God created you to do. And I just want to encourage you to continue. Um, we do have that point where God does the work in us. God gives us the vision. God refines the vision, but now we have some tools that we can build with, listening to the new stories. Everything that God does is what he does. Um, what um, Shana was talking about was the new impossible, the new things that might, might come out that we've never seen before. Um, I'm just so excited and incredibly encouraged, and I just want to encourage you to be what God created and ordained you to be, wherever he puts you. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna jump in because man, I wasn't gonna say this <laughs> until you said there might be some prophetic words and I was like, okay, I'm gonna jump in. Uh, man, Randall and Juliana, when you guys were speaking, and even Matthew, there was the three of you guys. Um, Again, I'm going to bring out my nerdiness, but I just feel like you guys need to hear this, that I believe that God gave me this vision of, um, and this was a couple years back, but going into the science aspect is that, you know, if everything um, has a vibration, everything has a frequency, um, they're finding out that there's frequencies to joy and there's frequencies to um, even to fear and to sickness. And what I'm finding is, is that we can walk in. This is the vision that I got. And I felt like God is, is just, was, was making me want to like say this to you guys. But I feel like there is this part where we can walk into a city 
and spend time with the Lord and figure out what that city's original sound was supposed to be. And it talks about, um, scientists have, have been um, studying the effects of movement and how that actually speaks to the hearts of those that watch. And it, it literally changes their mindset. And so I feel like as you guys are asking that question about what you guys are going to do next, and if you're going to go outside of the four walls of a building, I feel like God is going to give you a new sound that he's going to give you the mysteries like you were talking about, that it's going to start downloading that into you guys, and that as you go out into the cities and as you dance, that you are going to bring back the original, the authenticity of those cities that you guys are birthed in. And if you look up the word authentic, it literally says to go back to the original design. And so I feel like that God is going to start doing that with you guys, that it might look completely different, and it is a scary, scary thing without the funding and all of that. I get that. Um, but I just want to encourage you because I feel like God is going to shift your movements, your dancing into the streets for a reason so that, that the, the frequencies of God, that man, the, the dreams that come down for it, you guys will be able to project that through your movement out into the world where they may not have ever seen it. And so I just want you guys, man, everyone, I just, everyone that's listening, I just feel like if that's something that's stirring, that you guys need to look for something new, look for the new downloads because I feel like that's what God is saying, that he wants us to become um, almost the fighters of, of the cities. Like, you know, if we walk into a city and feel like it's, it's been um, maybe fear impacted, I feel like we are going to be able to impact that through movements and that God is going to download that into you guys. And so, man, I just am really encouraged. I feel God in this, but I just feel like, man, the things that you guys are about to do are going to blow us away. And I'm just excited to see and watch and be a part a little bit. So, yeah. You know, something that I wanted to bring out in this teaching about Zerubbabel, we may think, well, you know, at the end of the day, why was this so important anyway, this building of the temple? Well, what we have to realize is that this is the same temple that Jesus was dedicated in. It was the same temple where Jesus taught in, Jesus did miracles in. So what Zerubbabel was actually doing was prophetic for the work of Christ and the mission of Christ as well. Now we are that temple through the grace of God. And he has an assignment for the temple that he is building within us as well. And so to realize that there's a purpose beyond what we are initiating ourselves uh, are just the, the the smallness in a sense or the parameters of the vision that we might have, but realize that it's really connected to the purposes of Christ. And that's why he's placed it in our hearts. He would not place it in your heart if it wasn't connected to his purposes. And the assignment that he's placed upon your life, his purpose is that his glory will be revealed through that assignment. That was the purpose for Zerubbabel building that physical temple. It's his purpose for building his temple in us, that his glory would be declared there. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. Thank you. I was just going to jump in and share um, something that's really been on my heart. I, I don't spend a lot of time on news, but because of my role leading these 300 schools, I do feel a certain responsibility to, to tune into the national dialogue occasionally so that I know what's going on. Um, and it probably won't surprise anybody here that everything's been politicized and polarized in, in a time when, you know, um, we should be you know, like think back to 9-11, right? Think what a glue that was for our nation in that time where, you know, for a, for a moment it was like, we are, you know, we're just Americans and we're here. And I just really feel like this is a moment for us to just say like, we are just Christians. We're here. And to just to strip away, like, it's not about the denomination or your company or the, you know, whatever. I mean, all the labels set them to the side. And it's just like, we are just, we are just one in Christ. And in that, I think it's okay um, but actually, I would like really say we, I hope we see more of this, that we're the peacemakers, right? Like it's okay to be really concerned about your health and really concerned about your job. 
Like those things aren't mutually exclusive. <laughs> like it's okay to be really helpful for a vaccine and know that your true hope is actually in Christ. So like this duality doesn't have to be a polarity. And I think, you know, it's going to take people of grace and peace and hope to show that, you know, this dynamic tension, this duality doesn't actually have to be polarity. You can care about all these things um, and hold, hold them tenderly. So when um, Randy was saying about the grace, 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 actually what I was thinking about when he said that, I was like, that's just every time I close out, you know, an email now, it's just grace and peace. Misty, you know, whatever I had to say, whether it was hard or they looked forward to hearing from it, I seal it with the same way, just grace and peace and let us just be people as we move forward that hold space, especially first and foremost for each other, for the variety of ways we, we have to work out our own situations, right? Like I, I have a dance, uh, my own dance school, not just the schools we lead, of 900 and you know, our state opened up, our Supreme Court threw everything, all the shelter in place down, it's the wild west, it's Wisconsin, and I'm choosing not to open. You know, so hopefully grace and peace for me making that choice, but we can't do that safely right now with 900 kids. I, I don't have peace about that, but you know, grace and peace to the YMCA and my church who decided in two weeks they can hold 700 right? So like for our, like the, for those closest to us in the body of Christ, let there be an even greater amount of support and grace and peace. So if Juliana, dan Juliana wants to dance on a park and Randall thinks he has to go into prisons, you know, where, or hospitals where infections, you know, like who are we to say what they were called to do, right? So grace and peace to the way we're going to solve it. And let's extend that out to the world around us and um, hopefully just like pull the fire out of this polarity uh, that's happening right now. I think there's such a, a holy moment um, of silence where the questions are being asked, like Steve said earlier, and there is such just a sense in my heart, you guys, that God has given us this window to speak in power in the days that have not yet been seen since the day of Pentecost, my friends, that he is going to speak in power and to let that be all that consumes us as we go forward. And like Cynthia was talking about, we are servants and let him blow us where the wind may blow and let us just serve and let us just pour out because yes, people are so hungry and they're so lost and they're questioning everything. And if we do not seize this moment, church, um, we the rocks are gonna cry out. They're gonna cry out in our place. We need to be loud. We need to cry out. We need to go out. We need to pour forth the spirit of the living God wherever, however, online, in a park, you know, in your driveway, wherever, however the Lord can pour out from you and your people be blessed in that. Take that as um, just this vision of what God is going to do. I just see the whole uh, group of us as artists as just these little flames that are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's just roaring fire that's coming and it's coming and the people are turning to the Lord and hearts are softened in the industry. Um, I have such a heart for our industry of dance, the mainstream dance industry. And God is softening the hearts because we've been stripped down and the idol that was dance that was so big has been completely vanquished. It's been put at bay and our hearts are just ready to receive from the Lord. So anyway, praise God and let it be and my friends let's keep encouraging each other let's let's do it let's hold each other to a, that accountability and say let's go team let's do this family let's let's find where god is in this and go after it with our whole hearts and not not look back i, I julie i so appreciate what you shared i just a couple words real quick is um i think as never before we we're, we're mandated to really love one another. You know, when the Bible talks about how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity, I think sometimes it can digress to just 
you know, psalm poetry. But this is a real, this is a real opportunity for the church. This is a real opportunity for us to really lock our shields of faith because uh, this, the, I don't think the world has ever been flatlined like this. And we could come out of this transformed and, and equipped and encouraged, but also just cheering each other on. You know, one of the things that cannot be partisan is the body of Christ. And I'm so thankful that we have this oasis here. Where we don't have to delve into politics and make political decisions, but we can trust the word of God, trust what each other's doing and encourage and build each other up. Yes, for the prophetic words. Yes, for truth. Yes, for, for the ability to go out in the streets and dance, go into the studios, but also to meet with that person there who's, who's at the end of the rope and really doesn't know what to do and be able to offer an authentic hope because we have expressed the love of Jesus. So um, I just, just really want us to just really hold on to that truth. Just hold on to that, that God's called us to be unified. It's one blood and it's one baptism, it's one nation, it's one people group, neither Jew, nor Greek, male or female, he's called us to be one. So let's celebrate that because the world really needs it now. I'm just being led really quickly. Um, as I'm listening to, to different um, mental practitioners and faith practitioners and that sort of thing, as we do our dance in different places and spaces, I think we have to also understand that the dance will be so potent that it will pierce hearts in a way that we're not used to. As people get used to being around other people. So I just want to just say that so that we're aware of when we start organizing our dance gatherings to also include that, that component that will be watchful to see how people are receiving the information because their responses may not be like they've been in the past to be, you know, a certain way. They're going to be different this time around. And we need to be prepared. I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I'm Jenny Dennis from Australia. So greetings from the Lord from Australia. I'm the chair of a foundation, um, the International Christian Dance Foundation, and my role is to support dancers worldwide. And I've, I've chosen to join this meeting. So um, I know some of you, but not all of you. So welcome. Hi, Cynthia. Great to see you. Um, and I just wanted to say my heart is for America at the moment. I know you're going through such a hard time. Um, in a way, Australia's missed the bullet. We don't nearly, our, our dance community is in lockdown. None of our studios are open. All our companies are in closed down. Every single company stopped. We do not have the debate you have in America in that we've all, we've all been grounded, if you know what I mean. We don't have that choice. Um, and everything's on Zoom or on Facebook or on whatever. Um, I just wanted to share with you what we've done as a foundation, but just to encourage you, we, I approached the United Nations of Dance a couple of weeks ago and produced a dance in a church under social isolation rules, which meant that only three people could be there. And we produced a dance in an empty church. And that was very symbolic of that we can still dance in a church, but we can't gather in the church, but we did a dance in a church and I'm happy to share that with you at another stage. But I just really am touching base with you because I'm just aware of how tough it is in the States. I have friends there and the news here is really tough what you as a community are going through. So I just wanted to listen in and um, get your perspective and give your greetings and prayers that our prayers in Australia are for you too. And I'm, I'm just so aware um, you're doing it really tough. And I can't imagine how tough it is for, for some of your cities when I read the news. We're just starting to come out of lockdown now. And the difference in Australia is there's been less political battle that I notice. You, it's been a political football in your country. And our church is not as divided, let's say, about how to manage things. There's been more unity. So my heart is really for you guys because you're fighting on all sorts of levels. 
um, you know, how to manage it and also how to progress and go forward. There, there has been more solidarity in Australia around those things. Mm -hmm. So thank you for letting me join. <laughs> and uh, greetings from Australia. I'm sitting in my garden, okay? Because <laughs> I've been thrown out of the house because there's other Zoom meetings going on. But greetings to you. I dance in my house. This is my house. I dance in my garden. <laughs> and um, I, I'm personally doing so many lessons right now in my lounge room just to support artists. And in my own family, I've got half my family's unemployed and half of them are artists. So we hit unemployment. Unemployment would be our big thing which is what you are all going through, no doubt, or underemployment or that sort of financial stress. So I thought I'd just introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Speak on. <laughs> thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that greatly. Um, and I think you've moved house because I've been to your house in Australia and your garden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm just showing you a bit of Australia here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's lovely. As someone said, I was reading today, the autumn leaves are out. It's good because I'm isolated and I'm lucky I'm in a house, but the autumn is there out anyway. This is a bit of Australia. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a, it's a good reminder because we're talking about um, things that are obviously here in the states because so many of us are from the states but there's people joining us it's global and this is, we have to keep remembering it's a global crisis this isn't just the the companies and the schools and the dancers that are being affected um throughout you know america it it is global and when we can have that understanding and perspective that it's global that's one way to look at it but really it's kingdom and that trumps all of that. And that's so much bigger and so much grander. And that's the mindset and perspective that we've got to continue to have. That it's thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And really to deepen in our understanding of what does it mean? What is God's kingdom? And what is it that um, God wants to continue to kind of superimpose in his will being done here on earth? And those are these things we're talking about. It's love, it's grace, it's forgiveness, it's kindness, it's listening to stories, it's being present. It's all of those things that make us a part of humanity and not disengaged and, and removed from it. But we are a part of it and we have the solutions and although we don't necessarily know always the exact answer, we know the one that has the answer. And I know that always, you know, these things sound kind of trite in one way because we recite them, that I know the one that knows the answer, but really, really grabbing a hold of that truth that we do know Jesus. And so we've dialogued a bit about um, with some colleagues that this is a time to really get serious about our own faith and listening to the voice of God. And so if we're going to listen to stories, we need to first continue to understand the depth of listening to God and God listening to us in that communion. So then we will know really how to listen with a heart full of love and a heart full of um, just empathy and all of these things that the world needs so greatly from us. It's authenticity, it's sincerity, it's vulnerability, it's transparency, it's identity. It's all of those things that that's a part of God's kingdom. You know, as our new friend from Australia, I'm sorry, maybe she could throw her name in it's the box. Jenny. It's Jenny. Jenny. Okay. Jenny in the garden was sh sharing about being in the church. It made me think of the fish and the loaves, right? where it seems like this, you know, although I'm excited by everything that's been shared tonight, um, both practically and prophetically, there is a tiny piece of me that's like, oh, but God, I only have fill in the blank, right? Oh, but you know, like it's just me and my house and it, you know, my team scattered. I just thought she was talking about, there's just three of us in a church. I'm like, man, that's just like the fish and the loaves, except it's with our craft now instead of a basket of food, right? So I don't know, it just that encourages somebody, just bring what you have, right? You know, so if you have $20 left in the bank and two dancers, <laughs> whatever you have, and a Zoom connection, an internet connection, bring what you have. I think that's all we're being asked to do, right? Is give what we have to him and let him do what he's going to do with it. 
And Cindy, I also have a sense that for some of us, there's just kind of like this verse from Zechariah, you know, there seems to be this colossal mountain, this colossal hoop that has to be jumped over. Um, some people are depending on financial, um, they have financial need in order to uh, get to where they're going, uh, whether it's going into a new space or it doesn't have to have anything related to dance, but it might. Um, and there's also a sense of walls sometimes like toppling and being a little bit crushed by things that are, um, how would I say, falling around us. Um, but I think the, the beauty in what Steve described is the unity of the brothers and sisters together where God commands his anointing is we help to hold back the walls from tumbling, uh, not by might nor power, but by his spirit. And we, we also become like those who hold up Moses' hands, uh, the Aaron and the hers who say, okay, look, I've got your arms and you're going to be okay, and you're going to get through this, and the Lord is with you. You know, if you think of it like Haggai's uh, prophetic uh, word to Zerubbabel that stirred his spirit was so simple but so profound. The Lord is with you. <laughs> the Lord is with you. That was a prophetic word. <laughs> the Lord is with you. God loves you. He's got his hand upon you. Don't fear. Uh, the simplicity of the prophetic word, but yet the profoundness of what that word is. And I think if we can just say to one another, look, we're with each other. And you may feel like your walls are crumbling and that you're trying to hold them up by yourself, but guess what? You're not. You have a whole slew of people around you and we're holding up your wall together. You're not in this alone. You have a big financial need. Well, guess what? We covenant with you. We pray for you in that, that hurdle, that hoop that you may be going through. And again, it may not have anything to do with dance. You might be going through difficulties in your families right now. Sometimes two close quarters can bring up chaos. So <laughs> there's all kinds of different circumstances and situations. But we're not alone. And I would just like to kind of lead us in a prophetic act of supporting one another in whatever that may be and encouraging one another with just the simplicity of saying the lord is with you the lord is with you so if we can just all extend our hands <laughs> towards our faces and uh just take this as a sign of holding up the wall for another individual and proclaiming wall you will not tumble while you will not crush my brother or sister, but while you will be built and you will remain and you will become not the structure that crushes, but you will be the structure that builds forth the kingdom of God in my life and in my family and in my assignment, whatever it may be. So Father, right now you see our hands raised before one another in God as we raise our hands, we push back the hurdles, we push back the mountains in the name of Jesus. Father, we destroy the, the enemies that come to steal, kill, and destroy in Jesus' name. Lord, we become a connected army, a connected body, and there's protection here. And so, Lord, you see our hands reaching out. And Father, we pray specifically, especially for those who just feel the weight that they're just trying to hold up so much, so many responsibilities right now, Father. So many questions, so many decisions, so many, how am I going to do this? We hold them right now in Jesus' name, Father. We push back the walls that come to intimidate, but we also embrace them with our arms. And so now we're gonna change our gesture. Instead of pushing back the walls and pushing back the mountains and the insecurities, now we want to open arms of embrace. And we want to embrace our brothers and sisters. So just reach your arms around and embrace that brother, embrace that sister and say to them, don't fear, don't fear. If you just want to, they might not be able to hear you, but you, if you want to call their names right now, you can just call their names and say, fear not, fear not, Juliana. 
the Lord is with you. Fear not, Cheryl. The Lord is with you. Fear not, Matthew. Fear not, Steve, Rachel, Peter, Aria, Christian, all of you. Do not fear, my brother Steve. Don't fear. The Lord's with you. The Lord is with you. He who began the good work, he's faithful to complete it. So we just embrace one another, God, from all over the world right now, God, from all these different countries that are tuning in. We embrace our brothers and sisters in the embrace of Christ. And Father, this is this is the bond that cannot be broken, Father. This is the cord that cannot be destroyed or torn. And we hold to that, Father God, and we proclaim your goodness. We proclaim your faithfulness, Lord. And Father, we hold up the arms of the leaders in Jesus' name, God. We hold them up. We hold them up as Moses stretches his rod across the Red Sea and and knows that a miracle can be done. But he also, even though he's heard the word of the Lord, he needs people at his side. And so, Father, draw those people to our side, God. Draw the people to the sides of your children to say, don't fear because God is with you. Don't give up. Don't surrender to the pressures around you. The Lord is with you. So, Father, we just hold one another in that stability of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray that people right now feel your presence. They feel your embrace. They feel the embrace of their brother and their sister. Let it be, God. Put the small part. I know that this sometimes can feel chaotic and I've been on a few different Zooms where everybody unmutes themselves. And just, I would encourage us to unmute yourself and just give thanks. Just praise God and give him thanks that we worship you, Father. We exalt you. We thank you. Thank we you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just bless you, Lord. Father, bless you, Lord. Father God, we thank you so much for this time and the trumpet calling, God. We thank you that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Father, we, just, we, do, we bless your name, God. Father, we thank you. Because you are our shepherd. You are leading us. Into you, are shepherd. You, are leading us into you are who you say you are. You are who you are. Thank you, God, for that. Holding us up. That we can lift up your name. Father, we thank you for your right Right here. Keep building your temple. You Father, through these leaders. Thank, thank you. We give you thanks. Here to us. Drawing near to you. Lord, by that you would take the word of the Lord. Hey, Lord God. Lord God, that our hearts are so strengthened and have high in your spirit. For your presence, God. Left, not right, but in the very presence of what you would into your good plan and your good purpose. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Last thing that we get to get ready to go to the Lord. Glorious to the Lord. Glorious to the Lord. Glorious to the Lord. Storehouses of heaven. And access to the God who holds the universe in the palm of his hands. It's too good, too great for you. Nothing is too big for you. You have everything in your hands. Pour out provision and blessing and encouragement in your spirit to encourage hearts and your joy, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Darrell, I'm going to ask you, if there's a song in your heart, is there something that you can share with us, brother? Wow, look at how the Lord's moving. <laughs> All the saints and angels bow yes. before you. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb mm -hmm. of God and sing, you are worthy of it all, and you are worthy of it all, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Oh, you are worthy of it. Oh, yes, you are, Lord. You are worthy of it. Oh, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, you do, Lord. You are worthy of it all. God, you're so worthy. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You do deserve the glory. Lord, we're reminded that everything comes from you and everything belongs to you. Our lives, they were a gift and they came from you, God, and, and we surrender our lives right back to you, Lord Jesus. And God, the thing that's so heavy on my heart is intimacy. You are calling us to intimacy. And yes, we have assignments. Yes, we have things that you've purposed us to do, God, but they are birthed from intimacy. So I challenge every person on this call to be intimate with the Lord Jesus right now, to make themselves vulnerable, to, ex to allow God to expose whatever it is that's causing us to be, um, just to restrict intimacy with him. And Lord, that's what you desire. That is what fulfills, that's what satisfies being in the presence of Jesus, being known by Jesus, being loved by Jesus, being called by Jesus, being linked to Jesus. That is what satisfies brothers and sisters. That's the only thing. So Jesus, would you cling closely to us? Oh God, draw near to your people even now and allow them to be vulnerable and intimate with you and to create a covenant that cannot be broken, that cannot be shaken. Circumstances can't do it, a virus can't do it, jobs or no jobs, performances, callings, careers, none of that can shake the covenant that we make with you, Jesus. Nothing, not one thing, not one thing can hinder that, Lord. So seal it, begin it, whatever it is, do it right now through your servant and through these servants. In Jesus' name we pray.
Um, I want to share this really quickly. Um, just, just the sense that there is like almost like a purging going on right now. I don't know, you know. Um, it just felt like there's a, there's sort of like this purge and spiritually going on, you know, even within our industry. Um, and in in Haggai it talks about rebuilding the temple that I may be glorified in it. Um, and I just want to encourage us to that um, you know God is rebuilding our temples also, our 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 temple of the Holy Spirit, you know um, that the, our physical body you know contains that treasure, um, and for us as artists we really are connected into the fact that that's all connected. You know, um, and for those of you that, you know, go out and do great works and see great things, theaters, wherever, you know, we all know that um, we want it to somehow resonate who we are. And it doesn't always do that. But I think in this season to move ahead, knowing that we're going to be OK and that, that this purging is going to make us, um, in the sense, bring our temple alongside of it, let our temples be be rebuilt that that god may be glorified through our temple and like steve was saying just really loving you know loving those around us is a part of being an artist and the the art of love what jesus spoke and i believe out of that pruning out of that reset out of that loving others especially those close to us that it sets the soil for new creativity to come forth into the world that both is true and authentic to those that see it but then the truth and authenticity rolls back unto those who created it and so in that there is a great strength and power that that work will then resonate the heart of god and um so just to encourage you that those prophetic books um are just that and as we go and read, read them ourselves, the Lord will speak to you very specifically of what he's rebuilding within you. Just hearing from some friends and others, one of the most um, missed aspect of um, connectivity during this time is human touch. And we know that we are image bearers. We've been made in the image of God. We are his hands, we are his eyes, we are his feet. We represent God himself in being made in his image. And when we say it's no longer I who live, but Christ who dwells within us, then we really understand that what we're bringing into relationships isn't our own gifts or talents or ideas or thoughts or good intentions really when we get in touch with what we're bringing we're bringing the presence of god we're bringing the spirit of god and people are really really missing that and i believe it's such an important time again for this download to understand identity we've heard about that tonight so what is it that we're going to offer and what is it that we're going to bring if we don't know that then we're going to bring what we were bringing before this whole pandemic without being revived or refreshed or refilled or um, enlightened in, in the new understanding of what God's doing. So I just, um, I'm just keep thinking about we're meeting and connecting like this, but people really are missing the breath, the touch, the connectivity, that energy that happens from body to body. So we get, we just got to get ready. 
We just got to continue to get ready and be responsible. And all that we're doing in this understanding and intimacy and drawing close to God. Cheryl, I also know that not everyone, because I recognize some faces and other people I don't know, but you know, for years there have been certain individuals that have come together on different platforms that we've been able to network together and encourage one another. And those have basically been structured around events. Uh, Project Dance is just a great example of that, bringing people together. Um, you know, Juliana's event that she has coming up with uh, Christian dance leaders and educators. It's just, there, there's such wonderful formats to bring people together physically. But I know that there are also people who feel isolated from these different uh, opportunities to network because they may live geographically in a place where they don't have that type of connection with other artists of faith or they may feel like what they're doing is a little bit out of the box, maybe from what other people are doing. So therefore they don't know exactly how they can fit in so smoothly. Uh, but how would I say, regardless of what sphere or platform or assignment that the Lord may have entrusted to us or allowed us by his grace to participate in. I know some of you are from mission-based organizations like Youth with a Mission others, professional companies like the Alvin Ailey Company. Uh, we're so diverse. Bill Wade, who has his own dance company in Cleveland. Such a diversity of individuals, but yet what we really have to believe and take into our hearts is that we are connected in Christ. And like Steve said, we are one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Different diversities of ministries, and we need to applaud and uphold but I know that the enemy can also use isolation and also um, perception to make us feel like we're really disconnected. So I just wanna say, I am so personally blessed and Cynthia, thank you because we are so diverse in our operations. Um, the people that have gathered even on this Zoom chat, so diverse, but yet, you know what? Those things didn't matter. It, it didn't matter what platform we had. We were able to connect on the, the plumb line, basically, of Jesus Christ, him being our Lord and our Savior, and that we need one another. And how would I say, it doesn't matter what our platform is. We need to be connected, but it's a choice to be connected as well. It took a choice for us to say, okay, I'm going to put in that meeting number and that ID, and I'm going to come in tonight. It's a choice to build relationship. So instead of just feeling isolated or alone, we can actually enter in. And I know that I can speak for the individuals that I do know personally. These are all very welcoming and loving people. I met Juliana for the first time face-to-face -face last year. And as soon as I met her, I said to her, gosh, I just feel like you're this long lost sister that I rediscovered or, you know, it was just like such a beautiful acceptance. And there was no, how would I say, like, let's put up a front and let's just kind of, you know, stand under our own little umbrella. No, it was immediate connection. And we need this from one another. It's, it's so important that we offer this grace and this humility before one another. And I just want to say to you, if you have felt alone, you're not alone. And even though what you do, you might feel like, oh, but it's so different from what some of you other guys are doing. Hey, at the end of the day, it's all about the grace that God has placed over all of our lives. So we are all in this together and we do need one another. But it does take a little bit of initiative, sometimes a lot of initiative to make the choices to connect. So I just want to speak personally, but I think I can speak for all of my friends. Look, if you ever need to personally connect with me, please do. I would love to hear your stories, what you're going through, how I can pray for you. I hope that I would have that same entrance into your life as well. Uh, and again, it takes initiation to do that. Don't feel like you're going to bother someone. We need this iron sharpening iron. And tonight, I 
and I leave this meeting, I know my life has been filled and enriched by all of you. And so I, I thank God for the diversities that we have. It just shows the multifacetedness of the kingdom of God. But guess what? We're all in this kingdom together. The hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. We do need each other. And so especially I want to break the lies of isolation uh, because I really sense in my spirit right now there are some of you that have felt that this isolation has been there, uh, that you have felt disconnected in a sense from what I would call the artistic side of the body of Christ as well. You haven't had that, that richness of fellowship for whatever reason it may be, or maybe you've kind of felt like the, the how would I say, the oddball in the group or, or you know, not necessarily belonging, but those are lies. You, you do belong. We're all woven into this tapestry and it's a coat of many colors. And if you've been going through this sense of isolation or you felt rejected or lonely, I just wanna to speak to you specifically tonight and say, no, you're not alone. The Lord is with you and your brothers and sisters are with you as well. And we're here for you and we love you and we support you. And thank you for your vulnerability. There was so much vulnerability tonight. Uh, I know some of you, uh, of course, you're friends of mine that I've met in different places. Sometimes you post things and you just really open up your hearts and you share so openly, even if that's just your struggles that you're pouring out, you're so vulnerable about it. But then you need to know that you're being prayed for and you're being upheld and people are understanding and that there's grace for you. So I just, I, I wanted to share that before we close our time tonight. You're not alone. If I may jump in, um, I'm super intimidated <laughs> just because I have a lot of um, mentors who are in this group that I haven't seen in a really long time. Um, I've been working in Las Vegas for the last six years um, in a secular company. Um, it's been really hard. Um, I came out on a complete and utter whim um, that the Lord led me to. And it was really hard to make that decision, but I made it. And I said, okay, if the Lord's going to be in this, then I'm going to go where he goes. Um, and I used to think that the dance company would be like the thing, was the thing um, that he would primarily be working through. And as I'm listening to so many people talk about, like, especially through this crazy event that the world is in right now um that our platforms are going to change really drastically and i feel like since coming to vegas the lord has always put me in really crazy platform or places um to do dance um in the gay bars like against go-go dancers who are like stripping for money <laughs> um on street corners um out on the strip um and every single time I feel myself be like, I am not doing this. Um, there is no way you can get me to step out in this way. Um, and never have I felt so vulnerable and so naked and so um, afraid to be in the public sphere. Um, And I'm getting ready for another move. Um, I feel like the Lord's moving me to Washington, D.C. And it has been, like, I've been out of work since February um, and have no assistance. <laughs> um, so I, like, have nothing. I'm starting from zero. And it's really hard for me to not feel emotional. Um, Partly because I I feel ha I've been so disconnected from family, um, and coming back to family has always been a really hard thing for me. It's not a natural thing. I'm comfortable being alone and by myself, um, and I have just kind of accepted that area of my life. Um, and I'm very shy and I, I'm very withheld, but then the Lord is always like, I'm gonna do something really crazy with you and put you in this crazy situation. Um, 
And I just feel like he keeps ratcheting that sensation higher and higher. Um, and it really does come down to like, you have to override my will because my will isn't strong enough to make that happen. But he's been really good about um, making that happen in spite of me, in spite of the times where I really don't believe him, in spite of the times where I, I, I have no vision. Like, I don't know what the vision is. And he goes, but we're gonna go here. And I'm like, okay. Um, and there's been some really cool stories and there's been some horrific stories that have come out of that, um, that have really broken my spirit. Um, so I'm, I'm asking for, um, for people to just pray for my heart right now, because I don't feel like I have a lot of strength to pursue what, what God is gonna, ultimately do in the next two months in my life. Um, and it's like to the point where it's really crippling. Um, and it's really hard to trust him. And it's, it's, I have not found that place in my life to where I see him as gonna be like him being there. Um, Cause I feel like he really did throw me out to the ocean that I've been like by myself trying to keep my head above water for so long and I'm like super tired. So I'm just, I guess, humbly asking for prayer. <laughs> can, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you, Matthew? I, I just really, I'd love to pray for you. Maybe everybody can just join with me. I just want to pray over you. Just reach your hands toward Matthew on the screen. Father, Lord God, we thank you that you are a God who is as close as the mention of your name, Lord God, that you are a God who has enveloped us in your love, Lord God, and you are a God of ordination. And I thank you, Father, for even the ordination you had on Matthew's life when he was born and bred and created in his, his mother's womb, Lord. And right now, I we just decree and declare your peace and your shalom over him, Lord God. We rebuke any sense of guilt or shame, Lord God. May he have an overwhelming sense of the great your great love for him, Lord God. Father, we know that the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. And Father, we know that God, Father, you have a plan and purposes that you will continue until the day of Christ Jesus concerning him. So Lord, right now, Lord God, as we stand there as his brothers and sisters in faith, God, we, Lord God, God, affirm the good work you've begun in him, Lord God, the plans that you have for him, Lord God. Father, we already, Lord God, thank you for what you've already prepared, Lord Jesus, for him in the future, Lord God. And that Father, Lord God, every voice of condemnation, every plan of the enemy that will want to rob and kill and destroy him of his divine destiny. Lord, we rebuke in Jesus' name. We stand in the gap on his behalf, Lord God, and we thank you that he'll live and not die. That Father, Lord Jesus, that you will take him from strength to strength and glory to glory in you, Lord God. He's your son, God. You died for him, God. You have great plans for him and great destiny, Lord God. So right now, Lord God, we annihilate the assignment of the enemy, Lord God. We decree and declare your love over him, Lord God. We yeah. speak peace and life, Lord Jesus, and God, affirmation, God, and that, Father, Lord God, the latter days of his life will be greater than former, even as you decree that, Lord God, over the temple, the latter days of Matthew's life will be greater than the former, Lord God, and not only for him, but for those that we stand proxy for, Lord God, others who have been at this place, God, where they yeah. don't understand, or God, feel, sense the connection of your love or your plans for them, Lord, we just, Lord God, thank you that, God, you will reveal yourself, you will baptize in love, you will order Order and strengthen, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus, in advance for what you're going to do. We have expectant hearts that, Father, you will do this because you're a faithful and loving God. So let it be. We decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Matthew, it's Bill Wade. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you too. Lord, I can so understand Matthew. I'm just, I'm the same. I'm just a little older. Father, I pray and I ask that you would, I just see things that have fallen over, Lord, that need to be not only just put back the way they're supposed to be, but in the arrangement that you have for him and for his life. Father, I pray for, speaking from one outlier to another, I pray, Father God, that um, you would begin to align things in Matthew's life. You would teach him how to asset map what you've put in his path 
so that things would start to make sense and bring him shalom, bring him peace in the innermost parts of himself in a way that he's never experienced. Father, I pray for an, a massive amount of healing yes. um, as you knit these things together in the perfect way you can. Father, if I can still be here and alive, you are real. Father God, I pray and I ask in Jesus' name that you would do some amazing work in Matthew's life, that you would continue to lead him, that he would you know, even check what he hears from you, that you would, you would, like, Lord, show him what fleeces to put out so that you can prove yourself, yes, this is indeed me speaking to you, and this is, this is indeed me. Lord, I pray for this, this whole um, moving to Washington, D.C. If that's true, Lord, I pray that you would start to, even tonight and tomorrow, assemble things in his life to confirm that it is indeed you and that he can have peace in that, even crazy stuff like provision, Father God, um, being somebody who, you know, the, the idea of family is a very rough topic as well. Father, I pray and I ask that you would have Matthew kind of settle into the fact that some of us may be put together as strange cloth to others, but you got us and you're the ones knitting us together. Father, I pray and I ask in Jesus' name that you would give him a peace on the inside that would do incredible things, Father. I agree with my brother Steve, Lord, that um, his, his years to come are going to be just rock star cool because of who you are, Father. Lord, you are our Father. And Lord Jesus, you are like our brother and our, and our mentor. And Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just fill his apartment, fill, fill him. Um, he, Matthew is a very generous person, Father. I pray that you would, um, somebody mentioned Job earlier this evening, Father, um, and I thought it was poignant. Lord, I pray that you would give back to Matthew more than twice the loss he has experienced and the confusion that he's experienced, that you would bring great clarity, great healing, and great provision that just astonishes him and therefore others. Father, we love you. We pray for our brother. Um, we love him. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, Matthew, um, I really want to share this scripture today because I, um, um, today, I was also in a kind of just really um, feel just where I am. And today I was just reading, you know, um, Bible and I just really felt like, feel like and this is the word for you. And you were so sincere, you know, kind of uh, crying out the Lord. And Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strengths. They will soar on wing like the eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So Lord is trying to you know, give you new strengths. And I know you are you must have experienced a lot of humiliation and shame. But you know, kind of here is on the scripture and um, Isaiah 61 7. Instead of your shame, you shall have instead of your sh your shame, you shall have double portion. Instead of dishonor, you shall rejoice in your lot. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess a double portion. You are, shall be everlasting joy. And Lord is trying to, you know, um, lead you to the place that, you know, you are all in the hearts, um, a desire going to be fulfilled. And because you are created by Lord. And so then, Lord, you know, claim that you are, you know, his since, you know, you were born. And... Yeah, thank you so much for, you know, your um, honesty, because, you know, Lord, you know, honor, honest the heart, and then God, God is very near the broken heart. So we all, you know, keep praying for you. Matthew, I just want to encourage you to stay the course. Stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. Don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, you reap if you don't faint. Continue to wait on the Lord. Continue to press in in prayer. And even when you can't say anything, just cry before the Lord because your tears 
are your meat day and night before the Lord. Be encouraged, you are not alone. And look at this crowd of people. Matthew, can we see your face? These people are a reminder of the support that you have. You're not alone. And the Lord has not left you and he's a very present help right now, right now. Be encouraged, my brother. Hold on. The best is yet to come. I encourage you, Matthew, and just pray that uh, his deep, deep healing fills your heart. And um, I just, <laughs> I can just see as you move towards your mentors, as uh, it takes strength in you and it takes resistance and it takes the fiery, fiery man that is within you to go move towards your mentors and move towards the many times where you feel, oh, again, are they, gonna, are they gonna listen to me again? As you move towards them, watch and see the shackles fall off you. Watch and see the things fall off you that are, that are uh, bottling up your life. Shame is coming off you. Um, and not only that, the Lord has got a journey in front of you. And I just feel the sense to say the Lord, is, he doesn't see anything as your fault here. There's nothing you've done that has, has caused all of this. There's nothing that's your fault. And he's just taking that off you now. Yeah, Matthew, this is Randall. And I just want to affirm the words that people have spoken over you, but uh, just my insight when I think about you, I, I just really see your priestly calling. Uh, something tells me you resonate with that. Um, you're really a creative priest of the Lord, Matthew. And the enemy would want to still kill and destroy that identity in you to try to crush it. Kind of like what Jesus said to Peter. You know what, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not falter. So know that your high priest, Jesus, your compassionate, loving Savior, is daily praying for you but also know that the Lord places it upon our hearts to pray for you as well. But I just wanna speak the truth of your identity. Um, you're not just any other dancer. You're not just any plain old artist. You are a priest of the Lord, my friend. And, and again, I just feel like you know that deep within. There, there's a sacredness, there's, there's a blessedness to your brokenness like what Thera shared with you. And I, I just want to really encourage you towards your priestly ministry. You're a worshiper. You have these gifts that are so beautiful and so glorious. And um, God just reveals things and give you, gives you downloads. And your vulnerability is so welcoming. Uh, so the audience that will be drawn to you will be such a diverse audience. But you stand in that place as a minister of Christ, as, as a true son, as a priest of the Lord, that is not standing before him in soiled garments, but in cleansed garments. And not that you took care of your own washing, but that the grace of Jesus has washed over you and he has made you clean. And he is the one who declares, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. This is a twig that I have plucked from the fire. And now walk in his ways, walk in his statues. Uh, he's, he's got a holy calling on your life, bro. Uh, every time I think about you, whenever I see your posts, that's exactly what comes to my mind, that this is a young, creative priest of the Lord. And so, yeah, I just pray that you hold to that truth, my friend. I love you, Matthew. Hi, everyone. My name is Mercy. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for being so vulnerable. Um, you sort of give me courage to be vulnerable. So I just mm, first want to let you know people whom I have met and have impacted in my life. Um, few of you are 
Miss Newland, Mr. Bill Wayne, I've joined your class before um, in contact improvisation. And your sharing made me cry, I remember. Um, Miss Shizu, you're awesome. I saw Miss So, if she's still here. And of course, Matthew. Miss Morton, Mr. Randy, Mr. Steven, uh, Rope, and Miss Jenny, whom I met from India, ironically. Uh, so glad to see you here. Part of me is actually feeling the isolation has been a blessing in disguise. Um, I'm also learning a lot about myself in the Lord. And especially in Malaysia, my area right now is a red zone. So we have been in lockdown for close to three months now. But I am not in a single bit feeling negative about it. And actually was um, feeling really serene. And I was able to even recognize some nice corners around the house to do some dance improvisation, which is way out of my comfort zone. Uh, so that was actually really enlightening. But part of me is feeling somewhat empty and hard to connect. Um, if you do not know, I'm actually from Malaysia, and so I have been here for about a year now, and I find it hard to find uh, a, dan a dance family where I feel the challenge that I experience similarly in Belhaven to, uh, to feel uh, how to say, connect as dancers, as uh, creators, and as spiritual mentors. And actually, your sharing has been uh, ringing the bell for two prophecies that have been given to me about God is giving me a new assignment, but he never revealed what is the assignment. And so for me, I am clear about my calling as an artist, as a Christian artist, uh, working in dance and dance ministry. Um, but this new assignment has been something that I've been praying and spending a lot of time to seek after God. And every day I've been actually caught copying scriptures that really fits my spirit as vitamins, not like physical vitamins, but spiritual vitamins. And uh, God has really opened door for me to train a lot of non-dancers non in particular uh, in the church. And I find it very enriching to really uh, build up people that is hungry for dance in the church who are not trained and being non-dancer and in fact I find it more challenging to train non-dancers so able to pull off big projects by God's grace and it's definitely not because of me but God uh, but somewhat I feel empty inside is that I miss the environment where I am a student so like not not being a teacher but a student collaborating with people who are also dancers that means we we feed on each other's energy and able to be become each other's mentor so to speak and then i'm able to also have have experience to upgrade myself from where i am and just keep on moving upwards uh in my skill in my teaching in my knowledge and just that kind of environment has been missing deeply inside me and so I am at a point that I'm craving uh, from God to really provide 
provide me an experience of dance mentorship in Malaysia, especially able to also share heart to heart in terms of spiritual topics. It's hard for me to find a Christian community where I can be challenged not only in my dance technique and dance choreography skill and putting up dance production, things like that. It has been, I guess, a struggle for me to really find in uh, Malaysia for almost a year. But for whatever harvest that I had since a year ago has been very fruitful. And, and I, I feel, um, I, hope, I hope in the future, uh, there will be opportunity for me to, that means God will open a door where I can feel much more of a deeper refine in my artistic skill. So I, I really miss my, my days when I was a student. So particularly the people that I have encountered as my teachers. Thanks. Hey, Mercy, I know that several of us right now um, are doing online classes. I know that Juliana with Ballet by Day, uh, her company has online virtual classes right now. Adeum is doing online classes on Wednesday, um, Houston time, Texas time, which is central time. Darrell Comedy, who spoke earlier, uh, he's going to be teaching a, a Lamone class or a Lamone based class for us. Uh, I'm sure there's others here that are also offering uh, virtual classes. Uh, and so it's, it's a way to plug in right now. And if you would like to join us on Wednesday, you would be more than welcome. You could contact Juliana. I'm sure she'd be happy to give you the schedule for Ballet 5 8 and the classes that they're having. Uh, Bill, I think that you guys are doing some classes too. Am I correct? Well, okay. <laughs> but I know other people are. So, so please feel free to, to join us. You can email me. I'll be happy to send you the link. Thank you. Hey, Mercy, I may be doing some classes as well coming up pretty soon. So I will let you know. And you're welcome to come join a ballet class. Sorry, who was speaking? This is Miss Morton. Oh, okay, Miss Morton. <laughs> One of my problem though is the time zone. Uh, and so not every classes I could really attend, but uh, to, to just let you know, I've been able to find um, a lot of like online classes, even though like, it's pre-recorded, but I am able to uh, get myself into it. And I mean, like if I dance not, not live with people, uh, it's, it's still a personal devotion for me. So I, I, I feel the fulfillment. I guess the emptiness that I really felt is, is not, having, not having a community where I could, you know, like how when we do assignments at Bell Hill, when we have like four or five people and then we work on a choreography, like that kind of mutual trained dancer kind of environment has been uh, something that is hard for me to find. And I find like a lot of the time I'm in a position where I'm a teacher but I wanted to also be a student and hopefully like that kind of environment would, would come into my life somehow, I hope, in Malaysia. Are we good? Oh, to answer the question of uh, Tracy, your question you say is God asking me to create this environment online? Um, uh, I don't necessarily feel feel that God is asking me to create an environment online. Um, but it's somewhere around. I feel that God is leading me towards the area of leadership, and. Where is my team? I have no idea. So I guess I'm at a point, like like at a crossroad, I'm not sure which direction God is leading me. And so I'm at a point still 
waiting and he, to hear God's voice to tell me which is the direction. So like, I don't have a solid clue yet. I know like, okay, this new assignment has been tell, has been told to me twice. That was in 2019. That was the first time. Then I guess I'd like, like three months later, another person received the same thing. And then now at this Zoom meeting, the third time. Uh, and I nearly didn't want it to come on because it was 7 a.m. in my morning. And then somehow I felt the urge, mercy, like just come on. And it was such a blessing in disguise. So the same word assignments keep on repeating again and again to like a few of you. And, and I just feel like, God is getting closer to really reveal what it is. And so I still don't know. I still don't know what is this new assignment. It can be anything. Uh, so I'm, I guess, excited to know what it is. But at the same time, I don't know what it is. So it's, it's like a mixed emotion for me, really. Cynthia, I just have a quick question. I'm wondering if this is recorded. I just have a few people that I would love to send it to, if so. Yes. Yes, Cynthia, once again, I just want to thank you for just your uh, tenacity and your perseverance. Uh, not only are you hosting this tonight, but you've been doing this for months now, like ever since things began. You just keep connecting people on so many different levels, uh, also with health and wellness, which is such an important factor right now for everyone, mental health, physical health, nutrition. Uh, and so I would encourage you all to look at Cynthia's Facebook page and there's just so many different things that you can enter in on. Um, but thank you for just being such a, a key person in the body of Christ and especially among us creative people that keep us connected together and bring us together from all around the world. It's just such a, an incredible blessing, Cynthia. So we really thank God for you. Thank you so much for what you do. So Cynthia, would it be okay if I just closed out our time in prayer together? Father, I wanna thank you for each of my brothers and sisters, God, and Lord, I bless them in your name. Father, I pray your priestly blessing over them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you his perfect peace that surpasses understanding that guards your heart and your mind. The Lord be gracious to you and provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory. The Lord lift up your heart. The Lord lift up your thoughts. The Lord lift up your physical being and the welfare of your life, knowing that you can trust in him and that those who trust in him will not be disappointed. The Lord remind you that he will never forsake you. He will never leave you because he has made a covenant with you and that he who began a good work in you he is faithful to complete it. So Father, we thank you so much for the celebration of grace and of life and of hope tonight, God. And Lord, let us carry this as a treasure in our hearts, Father, and to not lose sight of it. Thank you for these beautiful people. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, God. I celebrate them, God. I'm so thankful for each and every one. And Lord, thank you for this beautiful tapestry. How beautiful is the body of Christ. So we give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Au revoir. Bonne nuit. Au revoir. Au revoir. Hey, let's do this again sometime. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, it, it's four in the morning again. <laughs> hey, is that your pillow, yeah. Christian? Huh? Is that your pillow? She's got that special pillow. I am on my bed. <laughs> you can see her pillow. I'm asleep. <laughs> hey, Sandy. <laughs> well, thank you, all the leaders. That is that was absolutely amazing meeting. Thank you, Sincere, for you know, doing this. You're I'm welcome. so I'm so encouraged. Good. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Say this. Bye, bye. 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 I don't have a set time yet, uh, oh, okay. I'll, but I can keep the time difference in mind somehow, but I oh, haven't yeah. really set anything up officially. So when I do, I'll let you know. How's that? Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to worry about the time zone. If yeah, I can, usually I can, down, yeah, I can also record them, you know, and then send you the copy of the class. It's not quite oh. the same action, but um, yeah, that's an option too. What platform do you have in mind? I'll probably, uh, well, I usually try to do it Zoom. I try okay. to do it live so I can give feedback to the dancers. Mm, that's okay. Mr. Randy hey. ran away, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm Mercy. not sure how he's going to contact me yet. Hey, it's Cheryl. Hi. It's Cheryl. Hey. Um, are you connected with some dancers in Malaysia? Project Dance has done a few events there in Penang. Um, and we have some friends in KL. I, I'd be happy to connect you with some other dancers if you'd like. That would be cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually got put in my heart to about a project that I've created from, from um, how do you call it? Like an organic project called Story of, Stories of Resilience, where God put, okay. put something in my heart to actually use performing art and social justice to put it together. That means um, mm -hmm. using performing art to tell uh, stories for the community, like meaningful to the community, especially if there's anything related to um, story of resilience. And actually this year got uh, sort of moved me to re like recraft this and bring it in Malaysia. Like that means craft it for Malaysia. And somehow mm -hmm. this episode happens and so the whole thing was delayed so I'm not sure when the when this project may be happening again but I plan to so in the process of mm. uh, connecting with people and really pray who are the ones that God choose uh, and and so now a lot of the project like even if I perform I have been doing solo and so in that sense like, I feel that I hope to have a mm. team um, do more partnerings and just things like that able to expand my creativity mm -hmm. and so right now it's still more at like mm -hmm. what uh, Randy is sharing is, is on hold or like it's small and when it's expanding and when this sort of new assignment is happening I don't know but whether this new assignment is related to dance I'm not sure so definitely I'll appreciate like prayer just keep me in prayer how God is leading me and somewhat I feel I don't know, it's like, I guess I kind of like feeling a bit lost, but not in a terrible way. It's just that I, I hope that it will be clearer because I'm a planner. So sometimes when things is not clear, then I feel like I'm very lost. And God has been always working about this area in me anyway. Uh, and each time he gets me really good. So yeah, um, definitely wow. connection will be helpful. I mean, I just, I love your heart for the Lord. I think you're, you definitely want to hear from God and God is going to honor that. I do want to challenge you to take a step into the field. You know, I want, I want to challenge you to take a step towards even just a little piece of what the assignment might be. And as I'm a bystander, just listening, I'm thinking, oh, but you know, you can pray about this, but you know, with what Steve Brooks was sharing about, this is a time to be telling stories right? And that's something that's on your heart. And we talked a lot tonight about starting small. Um, and so you know, I just want to encourage you not to be afraid of what you might produce that is a very small beginning. 
And I think the Lord will come and wrap around that, around that part of that. Right. And so, you know, just, just as a caution, not to wait too long, right? If he's asking you to take just even one step towards what you think it might be, then you're on a path and he can go, oh yeah, you took your step, you know, you finally started moving and now I want you to go this way. So just to encourage you to not be afraid to step out. Um, and there's no condemnation or shame in the Lord. He loves our heart for him and, you know, producing one small thing will open could potentially open up doors and give you clues and answers to what maybe the next step might be. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I can't help you with the, with the touch, with the dance classes. I miss being a student. Also, there's absolutely no substitute for being in a packed crowded dance studio where you can be challenged by other dancers. I'm just, there's nothing better than that. And I hope that we all get to do that soon. And until then, we're all crying, you know. <laughs> I know Miss Newlands and Miss Morton once said, when you leave Belhaven, you'll be craving for the environment. It's so true. It's real. Yeah, it is. Bless you. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. I'm going to take off. Love you guys. I love you too. Bye, Miss Morton. Bye, Miss Newlands. Bye, Derry. Love you.